the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Thursday, January 14th, 2021. And today, there's a lot of shit happening in the sports world. Shout out to Twine for that beat drop there. Let's get into it. Urban Meyer has been hired by the Jacksonville Jaguars. They have come to an agreement. Our guy, Michael Lombardi, dropped a Lombo Bombo this morning saying that you can go ahead and lock that one in. Now, all the insiders were trying to get this scoop, but now Urban Meyer will be headed down to Jacksonville. There's allegedly a couple names popping up for the GM position. They had been meeting for a month or so, I guess, so we've only heard about a couple meetings. I, I assume they're on that yacht more than once together what was urban talking to shod khan about was it about the control factor was it about who gets to make the roster cuts is it about how the operation is run or is it a mutual agreement on the money is it a money thing nobody will ever know i assume that won't come out hopefully this works out for duval because they have the number one overall pick they got like 75 million dollars in cap space they got a new head coach they got two pools in their stadium is this gonna be the biggest and best times of the jacksonville jaguars organizations existence they get 11 draft picks in the 2021 draft including number one and seven in the first four rounds north of 75 million in the 2021 cap space and they have a guy who everybody is thinking is recruiting a lot of very well-known nfl coaches to join him down there as he doesn't have much experience at all in the nfl a lot of college football coaches have come into the men's league and completely failed some have had a lot of success what will urban meyer be will he be able to remain healthy enough to coach Jacksonville to a Super Bowl mm. TBD we shall see also uh, the Detroit Lions hired a general manager none of us have ever fucking heard of him <laughs> how's he gonna do nobody knows Chris Spielman makes his first move as the advisor of the Lions the Steelers have fired Randy Fick not fired sorry did not extend Randy Fickner's contract which has expired in March or will expire in March to be the offensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers also offensive line coach was uh, let go and Tom Bradley formerly of Penn State for a long long time the DB's coach on on the defensive side of the ball, he will be let go. Keith Butler, defensive coordinator, he's going to rework his contract to be a year-to-year contract. What will this do for the offensive side of the ball with the Steelers with Randy Fickner moving on? Will they hire from within and Ben Roethlisberger sticks around, or will a new offense come in Ooh, and you can go right ahead on. and bank on Ben Roethlisberger not coming back? Oh. High implications in Pittsburgh, but moves are being made. Speaking of moves being made, James Harden was traded yesterday to the Brooklyn Nets. Now, that move came hours after our guy, Tone Diggs, Mm -hmm. announced that this trade was going to happen. Now, when he announced it, it came from a fake troll account, Mr. Barry McCockner. Yes. But maybe Barry and Tone knew something that we all didn't. And although Tone apologized in the end, he had to feel pretty redeemed at Tone Diggs. Big breaking news day for you yesterday. The COVID cowboy Mm -hmm. seems to have hopped right back in the saddle. (laughs) You hung that hat up yesterday because you thought you got got. But instead, you were ahead of the times. It wasn't a Lombo bomb. It was a COVID cowboy riding to the promised land. Now, granted, they did not trade Kyrie Irving, and it was much, much, much different than what you explained. <laughs> but inevitably, James Harden goes to Brooklyn. You're taking a victory lap on your horse, I'd assume. A thousand percent correct. Uh, when you're in this news-breaking world, um, <laughs> as I've been for some time now, you realize when there's smoke, there's fire. And sometimes you have to trust sources that aren't the normal sources. And Weed Killer 69 was a source that I, in fact, trusted and even though it wasn't the standard source that people normally get their information from, I decided to run with it, and it turned out being correct. Now, I will say, you do dive deep into the weeds for the sources. Uh-huh. Okay? Yesterday, Ultra mm-hmm. Weed Hater was yep. one of your sources. Yep. And although it got a couple aspects of the trade wrong, completely wrong, mm-hmm. 
Still got the overall move, Harden to Brooklyn. Now, did not add in, you know, the Pacers getting involved and Cleveland yeah, getting involved right. and everything like that. So you missed a couple key elements, but mm -hmm. you guys saw the foundation of what was being built in the possibilities ahead. So, look, I don't think you had to apologize. I mean, you definitely did at the time, <laughs> but I do like that you took a victory lap afterwards. Now, other deep dives into sources. You're, somebody rubbed their hands. I was warming up my hands. We're we're oh, okay. All right. Is there smoke? It sounded like you literally went right into my the bed, mic. No, no, no worries. I think you're pretty excited about this. This show, okay? This oh, show. Oh. A lot of people, you know, this show is by far the worst sports show there is. Okay? Mm -hmm. We know sure. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Show stinks. All right? Show does stink. We don't have, you know, like block time for pre-show meetings okay no, it's not no. like we sit around a table and we we graph out what's gonna ha like that does not happen with this show it's very different than a lot of other shows okay and now we're seeing other shows that are coming into our world in the way they operate we are much different than a lot of shows we are oh, learning yeah. slowly now i got a chance to experience some of the espn obviously whenever i got to go on get up with the legend mike greenberg the way they operate their show and college game day i've gotten a chance to kind of see how they go those shows are you know like institutional like shows mm -hmm. our show is nothing like those shows no. No. okay nothing like it. thank uh -uh. god i got a chance to go to wwe do the way wwe does stuff our show nothing like wwe shows okay but i do believe this show okay i feel like we know if it's on the internet i am on my phone all day every day mm -hmm. as are the boys i feel like we have the deepest dive of Rolodex of shit that we look into to go ahead and form our thoughts and opinions because we don't want to speak out of our ass, right? Uh -huh. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like we, we have a real passion for that because it's our jobs. Like, hey, now granted, Connor says some very dumb things that are nowhere near true on a very regular basis. All sure. Yep. But yep. he also says some things that are very, very accurate. Yeah, quite so profound. You know, you kind of got to count all of his hacks into his batting average, mm -hmm. but he seems to potentially have the lowest batting average, but he's going home runs. Okay. A lot of us very focused on staying within the know. Now, granted, I don't watch a lot of, you know, like TV stuff, but if it's on the internet, I feel like I know a good bit about it. Diggs takes a lot of pride in this as well. People don't know this. Diggs comes in in the morning. He has his like little coffee. He has his, his mm -hmm. computer. He's going through everything. He's a different worker than I am. He likes to write things out and everything like that. Diggs yesterday, deep dive into the Pittsburgh fucking Post Gazette. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Our hometown newspaper, so it's something he's probably read for a long time. And he reads an article that is intriguing to all of us about future moves for the Steelers because we talk about the Steelers on the show. By the way, the Steelers were one of the big storylines, and we got numerous people from Pittsburgh on, in, the, in the studio, obviously. We have friends in the Steelers organization, both mm -hmm. in all aspects of that. So we talk about the Steelers a little bit. So that was an article that Diggs felt needed to be read. Oh, sure. yeah. For us to do our job. Absolutely. Diggs then sends that article into the group. Mm -hmm. We see the quote, we all read it, and we're like, okay, here we go. Jerry fucking Dulac. Yep. Mm. Okay, a guy in Pittsburgh <laughs> who works for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Mm -hmm. He wrote an incredible article, okay? And he said that sources have told him that Juju is looking to go to a bigger market. Okay, that is what his sources said. So we said yesterday, we had to cover it. Like, hey, Juju is a free agent. That's Juju right. is one of the, there's Jerry Dulac, by the way. Shout out oh. to Jerry coming back. Yeah, there, that's Jerry Dulac right there. Or, sorry, that's Jerry Dulac right there, right there. With that guy. And listen, Jerry, I don't yeah. know I don't know much about him, okay? I, I didn't read newspapers growing up. I do know Ed Bouchette's a legend there next to him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ed Bouchette. But Jerry Dulac wrote this article. So whenever it comes up in conversation about Juju's future, we go, oh, we are well-researched. Okay, fun fact about uh, Juju's future. It is being alleged per sources yes. mm -hmm. of sources mm -hmm. that Juju's looking to build his brand. Juju. Uh, I don't know if he, I think he did listen to the entire video and he said this is 100% wrong. And I think he put it out there to kind of let everybody know that that was wrong. But the Juju Bees, oh, the Juju oh, Bees, okay, who I respect, all right, you got, you got that loyal of a fan base. You can do uh, TikToks on, like, he does good business off the field. His fan base is an awesome one. They start coming after me for making up fake news. Hey, stupid, dumb, young motherfuckers, okay? <laughs> I didn't make that. We said allegedly in there as well, by the way, which kind of gets us off the hook of everything. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. literally in the first. With all due respect. But we were just reporting what we know because that's what we do. We're deep reporters. So all the people that started coming after me, they're like, oh, you're, you, I got a lot of tweets comparing me to people that 
I like legitimately just lie whenever they get on television. I'm like, no, 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 complete opposite, pal. Actually, well researched, know this. Yeah. Listen to what we say before we get. So we would like to clear this up. Jerry fucking Dulac uh -huh. <laughs> said Juju yeah. <laughs> from his sources that he heard. Yeah. Jerry Dulac said that Juju's looking to move to a bigger market. Okay. And maybe whenever we tweeted it out, we should have expected people not to potentially listen to the entire yeah. thing. But the word allegedly is sitting right there. We got Bleacher Report tweeting that yeah. I said Jeez. that Juju wants to go to a bigger market. Hey, Bleacher Report, that is not what I, that's not me, okay? No. Actually, in the video, if you say, we say, we read, sources say, and now we're getting just buried. Now we're just getting buried. Now we're know, oh, shut the fuck up. A lot of those tweets coming out from my <laughs> account to other people this morning. Bleach Report, huge on putting like six to eight emojis after tweets. So probably big jujubes. Oh, no. <laughs> if, I assume they're a big jujube group. But yeah, I mean, you, you get that nest a humming. Don't worry, they're not going to sting. I mean, they're just going to fly around and make a Buzz. lot of noise. <laughs> noise. They're not going to sting or do anything that'll hurt now, you. Now, granted, you did go after. You did. Yeah. Now, now what I'm saying is, I need. Yo, stop coming after me. Now, <laughs> if you watch that video and you decide to go after the COVID cowboy for what he said, so hey, be it. that's his bed. <laughs> uh, that is that is uh, the COVID cowboy okay. saddle that he put right onto the horse. <laughs> mm -hmm. You do what you got to do. But I've. I, Bleacher Report saying that I created that. Uh, it's like, no, that is not true at all. How about you guys do a little bit of fucking research? Yeah. Okay? Because that's time. what we do around here. Because our listeners and watchers deserve it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and how, is... how about Jerry Dulac just sitting back and letting everyone take <laughs> shrapnel, just grinning from his ivory tower? I mean, what, come on, can't Jerry. blame him, well, by the way. Once, Jerry, he, once he saw what was going on, you can't blame if him. If Jerry but... just sees us eating it over here, yeah. he's like, well, well I'm what? actually going to retract my... <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing his beehive suit. I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> the honey thing. Yeah, Listen, I mean, this is a live daily show. We're going to talk about things that are reported. Yes. People are like, well, why didn't you follow up on the report and check with your source? I mean, we don't fucking have sources, bro. What do you think this well, is? That that's is not our source. That's not our job. Our source is the people who have the sources. Yeah. Correct. And, that's what, and I, I would like a little bit more respect for the amount of time that I put on my phone every single day, okay? It's not like I'm just popping things up. I dedicate a lot of fucking hours on my phone. Now, my wife doesn't love it, okay? Nope. My dog, Valerie, doesn't love it. <laughs> She'll come up with a goddamn paw and hit it mm -hmm. out of there. Oh, yeah. But I'd like to know what's going on just to have a little bit of a, you know, a feel, a grasp of what's going on. So whenever you see somebody who's in the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, who writes that their sources are saying this, it's like, okay, here we go. Like, that seems like that's something. And by the way, it would make sense if that was the case on all sides. And I think that's potentially why the source might have said it to Jerry, because Jerry's like, of course, that's what he's looking to do. And mm -hmm. then it kind of go. So I'm not saying Jerry is lying either. I think Jerry did get that information. Yeah. But you can't. I'm tired of being fucking buried for me no. knowing what's going on and people saying. Didn't we do the right thing? I should though? be getting complimented. Yes. You really oh, yeah. Shoot the messenger here. Oh, yeah. I would like compliments from everybody. Yeah. Juju Bees. Now they set out to make you the fall guy. Yeah, like I'm exactly. the guy. I didn't make it up. And then Bleach Report fucking puts it. Like, hey, Bleach Report. That yeah. was pretty Those delicious. Guys Dude, fucking is... take a hike, pal. Yeah. Didn't you do the right thing, though? You tagged Juju in there. Yeah, we to tagged tell his Juju story, in it. And yeah. he told his story. Yeah. You yeah, we, went right to the source. That's what I'm saying. I, I think Bleach Report should have maybe said, Hero Pat McAfee yeah. Yeah. Huh. brings to light a potential wrong narrative Thank about you. Juju. Juju's response was, this is 100% not true. But instead, it was a complete opposite. They had a picture of me at the XFL when I was 270. <laughs> <laughs> hey, with, with a bad look, like a bad Brutal. look on that my face. That was a horrible photo. <laughs> Side profile. <laughs> These I mean, motherfuckers. Come on. Well, if you're going to bury somebody, you fucking just go all out. Yeah. That's what Bleach Report does. Oh, they fucking did, yeah, for sure. They're, they're like fat, fat. <laughs> Go after Jared Ducklock, not fucking you. I mean, Juju's been on the show, too. Yeah, it's, well, I don't know oh. if he'll ever come back on the show after what fucking things, <laughs> yeah. things has said numerous times, but for the... For the good of the show, I don't tell anybody their thoughts, what they're allowed to say, what they're not allowed to say. I will often follow up with the opinions <laughs> mm -hmm. of COVID Cal... Yo, fuck you. Uh, hey, fuck all of you, actually. That's, I should be getting like, hey, hey, Pat, thanks for you and the boys for doing the deep dive into a paper that probably doesn't get read that much yeah. by somebody that is doing something oh, yeah. and bringing this to light so Juju can clear his name. That's what I thought should have happened, but instead it was the complete opposite. I was being called Skip Bayless. Oh, like, geez. Whoa. Come on. Skip. Yeah, so, so I'm watching the NHL season end last night, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm watching the NHL season end, by yeah. the way. Rest in peace in the NHL good 2021 season. Good, 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 good season. Good season. Come on. Had a good Come season. on. What are you doing? Uh, pens fucking stink, dude. Oh. What are they doing? They got the worst penalty kill in the history of hockey. Yeah. What are they doing out there? And then the goalie, what's his name? Tristan Jari. That 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 guy? All right. We 
He left 17 goals in three minutes, that guy. He was just rolling around on the ice at one point. Like, yo, get up, dude. Get get up! So dramatic. It's the first game. It's a long season. Get up, I said. <laughs> then, I got, then I got trolled by fucking Gritty. Okay? Yeah, oh, Gritty God. comes after me. Shit. That googly-eyed stooge. I would like to let it know that I did start that. Okay? Because when we were up one nothing, I went straight for the fucking jug. How you doing, Gritty? Yeah. You should. You know, so I had to eat this one. Yeah. Didn't but he punch I, a kid? That was, that was the old gritty. I yes. gritty, oh, old gritty. Okay. Same okay. costume, different. <laughs> but anyway, so gritty tweet, and I just have to eat this because I did start this, yeah. and a lot of Philadelphia Johns were coming after me on the internet. Sure. So, and I just had to eat that because of how loud I was, okay, yesterday about the pens. And the fact that, by the way, I went two and one on the betting. So, Pretty good. Not uh, bad. Over hit. Easy. Lock. Knew that was going to happen. Sid scored plus 210. Knew that Boom. was going to happen. The only thing that didn't happen was the Penn's money line, which should have happened. And since it didn't, I think we all agree that the NHL season is probably dead at yeah. this point. Good year. But I was getting just attacked by mascots, Johns, mm-hmm. everybody. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, one tweet squeaks in there where they're like, oh, you think you're the new Skip Bayless making up stories about Juju? And I almost fucking, I, I put <laughs> oh. the phone down. Oh, you did? Put the Oculus on. Nice. Mm-hmm. And I ran through an entire class. <laughs> just one run. No, tried to knock out every single person in under a minute. Got them in under 50 seconds. And then went to bed. Hell That's yeah. Hell yeah. That was so rude. I'm like, yo, I put in a lot of work for this. I'm on my phone a lot. We're not just making shit up. No. Now, if we say people are saying, that's normally not a factual thing. It is just a an opinion. There is a chance that that is being pawned off on somebody. That does not exist. Mm-hmm. But... We don't know them, but we assume somebody potentially thinks that. Of course. Right. Also, who's to say that, you know, Jerry Dulac's not right? I mean, is this all correct if Juju ends up going to the Jets or something? I mean, who's to say he's not going to leave town? Yeah, there was a lot of uh, tweets that weren't allowed to have replies on Juju's Twitter account. Hmm. Interesting. Ooh. This one Ooh. did mm-hmm. have the apply. Yeah. Interesting. We should have buried Jerry whenever we initially reported. Should have. Yeah. We'll learn. Well, Hindsight's twenty twenty, but we will always put in work. I would like to be put of course. In Just like everybody assumes I was a very loud uh, NFL guy, like from the no, no, I didn't start talking until I knew I was good. You know, mm-hmm. that's like with this show. I'm not going to be talking the way I talk unless I know kind of what I'm fucking talking about. You're not going to see me just go out there and talk about something I don't know about. Hockey, it's in my blood. I know everything about it. That's right. Yesterday, <laughs> went on an entire rant. That was beautiful. Should have happened. Instead, we got a fucking goalie that's rolling around on the goddamn ice like mm-hmm. he's fucking, uh, uh, who's the fat one from Mighty Ducks? Goldberg. Goldberg. Yeah, yeah, like whenever he first got put in the ice. Yeah. yeah. The uh, first yeah. trip down there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We need the cat to get back in. Yeah. Ooh. You also should have known when you went on that run that they were destined to lose yeah yeah i have been quite a mush for the pittsburgh penguins over the years that's not your fault Mm-mm. it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> i uh well was that a playoff game we went to yeah. when we sat oh, yeah. yep we went to a playoff game where we sat on the ice basically Ooh. seeky rest in peace Rest in peace, Seeky. Hell of a run. Good run. Thank you, Seeky. Good season. Thank, Thank you, Seeky. Thank you, Seeky. What a run they had dude yeah, yeah. It was the best. All time, huh? It was the greatest ticket buying platform the world has yep. ever seen. And the moon. And then all of a sudden, and the moon. And, yeah. and then all of a sudden, uh, tickets were no longer needed for anything. Yeah. What and do you know? Their business is just over there in a the deep end, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know I mean? They should invest in Oculus and just get seats in every single stadium. Well, the Ocul- Oculus Arena is going to be one that needs to get filled. So uh-huh. It's getting real. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we went to a playoff game, shout out to SeatGeek, and I, we were sitting like on the extended bench of the visitors team. So me and Nick were literally right on the ice. Like it felt like we were in the game basically. And I was like, I was pumped for Nick. Obviously Nick lives and dies with the pens, but it was a really cool experience to be there. We're sitting there doing this thing and uh, the ref skates by and I got a little crack in the glass behind me. And I'm like, hey, hey, ref. Right. And I give him a little something like that. And then I show him some money or whatever. I'm like, let's Ooh. get this win. You know what I mean? He eyeballs me, stares me down. I was it 15 seconds later, maybe 20 seconds later. I'm not even sure. Calls a calls a penalty against the Penguins. Soft call too, but real like, soft. Like calls a penalty against. Looks at me while I'm making the call. Then they fucking score. 15 seconds into the power play. Jeez. And then just kind of just skated off. And Nick was like, we got to get you out of this building. <laughs> we got to get you out of here. I went to another game. The other team scored seven goals in the first period. <laughs> Jesus. A 7 nothing first period, second period. Yeah, I'm not great whenever I'm really loud for the Pens. But, hey, I'm a fucking fan. Yeah. Right? And if yeah, Sidney Crosby's going to keep scoring goals the way he's scoring goals, maybe they'll have a chance. But I can't believe they lost to the worst 
fucking team in the NHL last night, the Philadelphia Flyers. I mean, I try to tell you the Flyers are actually a pretty good team. I they, hate them, but they, they're good. They did look pretty good. They're flying around. They were yeah, flying. That, Flyers yeah. team, yeah. Flying. that Flyers team appeared to have a different gear they than the did. Pens did, but that doesn't matter. They still stink. All right, we got to get to a break. Ty Schmidt, Boston Connor. Zito's here with a poll. Zito, we need a big poll today. Oh, Can yeah. you please tell the, the people what your poll is of the day? Oh, yeah. Massive poll today. Which divisional round game this weekend will be the closest? Uh, right now, last place, Rams versus Packers, 8%. Bronze versus Chiefs, 10.4%. Buccaneers versus Saints, 35.2%. And Ravens versus Bills, 46.4%. Wow. Ooh, yeah. Huh. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's a that's an interesting little question mm-hmm. because whenever you start look, I, I immediately thought Bills Ravens. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, wait, Browns Chiefs still oh, because yeah. the Chiefs have played a lot of close games this yes. year and the Browns are rolling right now. Then you think about the Buccaneers and Saints, it's like they know a lot about each other. Yeah. And then whenever you look at the Packers Rams, you're like, okay, Packers probably win by 40 there. <laughs> Slaughter. Hopefully. That's I mean, the pretty more, much what I did about the Pens. <laughs> I know, exactly. And the more you say it, the more I'm getting worried about it because it seems like everybody thinks the Packers exactly. are going to win oh, by the shoes on the other foot, though. Yeah. Still yeah. fading the poll well, or what? Well, Packers don't stink, though. The Steelers <laughs> No, because the poll got one. They went one for two, right, last yeah. time? The poll was an over and a team pick or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The closest game is interesting because I think we're all betting. I would like to see the number on the Browns. Because that's ten and a half points, I think. Browns are getting ten or ten and a half against the Chiefs. That's a lot of points for a playoff game, especially for this Chiefs team that has not played like blowout football. Yeah. That, is, that is not the style of play that they have been playing. What's that, Diggs? For that 10, 10, 10, 10 and a half line, fifty four percent of the bets and fifty percent of the money. The money split fifty fifty wow. on Chiefs and Browns. Really? Man. Wow. That makes me feel a lot better also on the Browns plus 10. There's a lot of every single game this weekend is in the 50s as far as money is concerned. A lot of split bets this weekend. All right, let's – yeah, this ain't working. This thing's just – I was like, guy, guy that called in and hacked it. That's a juju. Oh, oh no. Got some Once again, go to Jerry Dulac's computer. Uh-huh. Got some honey in the Please key. stay out of my computer, dude. I'm, I, I, all I'm doing is just telling you what we're seeing. That's our job. Observe, report. Yes. Jerry don't care. He's probably getting 18 in right now. Uh, well, is he a golf guy? Oh, yeah. Big golf guy. Yeah, this thing's dead. This thing is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Son <laughs> of a bitch. I wonder if we can even answer calls. Is this computer complete? Chase in Idaho, what's going on? Oh. Oh, yeah, we can't okay. answer. Nice. Oh. Okay. Hey, Chase, what's oh. going on? Hey, Chase, how's it going? Don't really. What do you got, man? Hey, I was just curious uh, what your opinion on what the Dolphins should do for the third round drop pick. Third overall third pick. Round. We appreciate you, Chase. Yeah. You, you helped us out there. We proved that we can answer phone calls. Yeah. This computer, what, this is why nobody buys this shit. What yeah. is, uh-huh. You're exactly right. What is this thing? <laughs> I, I think it's Where's a Del? knockoff Dell. Ooh. You know? Dell's still a company. It is. Wow. Also, Microsoft, they use the surfaces on the sidelines of NFL games. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah. It's a premium process. Yeah, and, and they will dive into those yeah. things on numerous different NFL shows. Yeah, and then when they get to the locker room, they break out their iPads. Hey, excuse me. Give yeah. me the one that works. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see if this goes. I just restarted it again. Oh, there it is. Wow. Wow. Am I a computer tech possible? Well, am I a hockey sharp? Maybe. What? But am I somebody that's going to come in here and lie about other people's lives? No. Yeah, no. Never. So get off my dick. Wait, the phone calls on the other side. This is the Pat McAfee Show here on Thursday, January 14th, 2021. Why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it, and your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, mm-hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason. It is a true team sport where – it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game. Right. If you look at other team sports, uh, uh, basketball with five guys on the court, I think you've seen multiple players over the years. Uh, maybe one player, or maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships. Baseball, you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships. Soccer, you can have a dominant forward and or goalie 
that seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games. Uh, and then I guess the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions, there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching, there's a reliance on preparation, there's a reliance on diet and performance. Um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted and I think like any, uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we. You know, if players who played for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively. And, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed. And that's why at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy, because it's not easy. It's never easy. And I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week. It's never easy. And your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is, is a deep uh, fear of failure. Uh, that you might go out there and your best might not be good enough, and that's not okay with you. I didn't think I could continue to be an FCC regulated person without really hitting my max potential. And that's why he's with us. I love it. The Pat McAfee Show on Mad Dog Sports Radio, Channel 82. Yeah. Hey, if, if you're a business owner, you, you don't need me to tell you that running a business is tough. Uh -huh. Yeah. But you might be making it harder on yourself than necessary. For instance. Bingo, right there. <laughs> but also in other ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't let QuickBooks and spreadsheets slow you down anymore. It's time to upgrade to NetSuite. Hell yeah. yeah. Stop paying for multiple systems that don't give you the information you need when you need it. Ditch the spreadsheets and all the old software you've outgrown. Now is the time to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle, the world's number one cloud business system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control over your financials, what? HR, what? inventory, e-commerce, e and more. Everything you need all in one place instantaneously. Whether you're doing a million or hundreds of millions in revenue, save time and money with NetSuite. Join the over 22,000 companies using NetSuite right now. You won't be lonely with them. Uh -uh. Let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash pat. Schedule your free product tour right now at netsuite.com slash pat. N-E-T-S-U-I-T-E dot com slash P-A-T. Love NetSuite. NetSuite. Hey, love NetSuite. Love NetSuite. Nobody better. There's no way NetSuite's using this one. Right no, now. absolutely no, no. not. No, no. No, no. They know. They know. They know. They, they know, know. They know. Welcome back. I, uh, during the break, I went to the bathroom and uh, one commented on that Bleacher Report post. Oh, yeah, what'd you mm -hmm. say? One of my quickest, most suffice comments I've ever put on anything. <laughs> hmm. 
Fuck you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I didn't do it immediately upon seeing it because uh, I had to, you know, kind of weigh did. whether or not to do it. Sure. Ponder it. But after talking about the entire situation with what they did, had to do it. Oh, yeah. Had, had to, to be done. No other jobs. Horseshit. And I don't know how our relationship with Bleacher Report has been or will ever be going forward, but just quick it. I don't give a fuck. Nope. I don't care. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Are they going to block us? Who cares? Hopefully. There's 10 other ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bleach Report does do a pretty good job with some things. I mean, let's not, yeah, some things. Let's not get crazy. For sure. But they are spinning bullshit, and they got juju bees buzzing around my house. That's right. Yeah. I, got, I got the Pittsburgh Penguins laying a goddamn egg against the Eagles, and then I got to worry about their <laughs> bullshit. Flyers. Flyers are buzzing around the net. I mean, hey, Eagles fly. Bro. Flyers might win the cup this year, by the way. <laughs> no, <laughs> Bruins are going to win the cup. No, no, the Flyers might no, win dead. the cup. Bruins are going to win the cup. Let's go to Andre in Massachusetts. What's going on, Andre? What's up, boys? How you doing? Not too shabby. The bees are buzzing, but I think they're kind of dying <laughs> off with the weather. What do you want to talk about, pal? Well, first, I just want to say thank you, longtime listener. Uh, you got me through nursing school this year. Just want to thank you all, boys. Hey, thanks for your decision to get into nursing. Uh, appreciate what you're doing there, and we're lucky to be a part of your uh, voyage to saving lives. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. No, no, thank you. No, uh, no, 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 Andre. No, 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 no. Thank oh. you. And if we lived in your area, we would make a sign and put it in your front yard yeah, over the last yep. nine, ten months. Saw so a lot of that on the internet. Mm -hmm. Well, first, before I get into it, I just want to say thanks for being honest reporters. I know what happened yesterday, this but you know, it's it. a little bump on the road. He you gets know? it. Why didn't it say Pat McAfee reports? You know, because that's two different things. Yes. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I was yeah. reporting. Reacting. I don't have a degree in anything, let alone journalism. <laughs> I was I was reporting this. I was doing what they were supposed to be doing. You didn't write yeah. the article. Anyways. Exactly. They need to put some respect on your name. That's all I got to say. Well, just my but. work. Just our work. Like, uh -huh. I think just put a little respect on the work mm -hmm. that gets put in. You know what I mean? narratives over there. Unbelievable. Anyways, what do you want to talk about, Andre? We appreciate everything you've said here. Of course. Uh, so... This is maybe a question for Boston Connor and you, Pat. Uh, anyone can chime in, obviously. So I know we all watched the Patriots season this year. Um, and I know. Uh, nobody gives a fuck, Andre. So ah, who can't do it. <laughs> nobody cares. He thanks for your service in the Yeah, thank yeah, you, Andre. We appreciate you, Andre. But I mean, the Patriots obviously have a lot of decisions to make going forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. They keep Cam Newton. Oh. Do they give Cam Newton an opportunity with an actual roster, or will they continue to be the team that has a bad roster and try to win games? Because that's kind of how it all operates. Because they went all in the last five years, went to three Super Bowls, won two or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no chance Cam Newton's getting $25 million from the New England well, Patriots. He so. might. Wait, 20 to $25 million a year, a year, two years, 40 to $50 million, Adam Schefter talked about. Good for Ron Rivera. Who's going to pay him? <laughs> Football team. I don't know. That doesn't feel like no, it. I don't After think seeing Heineken go I mean, out Heineken, there, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Pats he's are making <laughs> what? He's making what? Sixty-five k. Why? What are you gonna give Cam Newton fifty million for? There's him? been rumors <laughs> about the Pats going after Heineken. Actually, no. Are you serious? Oh yeah, dead serious. There's been Stettel? some stuff through the through the grapevine. What's that? Yeah, what Stidham Stettel, just stinks. Huh? Remember, we, there was a time. Stettel, there was a time where you thought Stidham was gonna lead you guys to a Super yeah. Bowl post on oh, yeah. Brady. MVP. Yeah. And that was before he stepped onto the football field. No, no, no. This was after he stepped on. Oh, oh. Through numerous pick sixes, no. you were like, no, he learned. He learned is what you said. He threw a pick six to Jamal Adams with all due respect. He's one of the better safeties in the NFL. <laughs> really good cover safety. Yeah. Unbelievable, yeah. Give Not him, known for rushing the passer. He's mostly him, yeah, cover give safety. him a break. Plus, he had a dime to go to like the chest. box safety. I said Jamal Adams is the box uh -huh. safety in the NFL. Yeah, right the now. hybrid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a guy I got a play, uh, chance to play alongside who was one of the most entertaining humans I have ever encountered, and I don't know if he knew, knew it or not. He, uh, he said he wanted to be a hybrid safety defensive end. Ooh. <laughs> Isaiah Simmons. And I think he could have, by the way. I really? think he could if they would have gave him an opportunity. I'm not sure the defenses were sophisticated enough for a player like sure. him. But they're kind of doing that with Jamal now at this point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jamal Adams has two interceptions. <laughs> What's that? Jamal Adams has two interceptions. In his whole? <laughs> yeah, his first, I believe, <laughs> I believe his first no, interception. No, in his whole career. I believe his first interception no was the pick six against Stidham. <laughs> Let's go to Nick in Ohio. <laughs> Nick, what's going on, dude? That's awesome. <laughs> Almost positive. That is awesome. Hey, Paisanos, how's everybody doing? Hey, not too shabby, Nick. You from Youngstown? Yeah. Yeah, I just literally the entire state of Ohio. <laughs> Paisan, let's go ahead and circle it right down into Youngstown. What do you want to talk about, Nick? 
Hey, uh, first thing, Ty, go pack go, baby. Hopefully pull it out this uh, weekend. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. Um, my hey, question is, since we're all the old. same age, just about, who are the top five quarterbacks to not win a Super Bowl? Oh, great question there. I mean, you're, you're just going to go with the classic – uh, answer, you're going to put Dan Marino in that list. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to toss Andrew Luck in that list. Mm -hmm. I'd assume some people will, as they should, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, Jim you, Kelly. Jim yeah. Kelly, you toss him. So there's three of the five. Now who are the other two? We'll, we'll let you guys decide. Yeah, Look how nice we are. Uh, Fran Tarkenton. We'll, we'll let other people. Oh. Yeah, of course, Fran Tarkenton. Uh -huh. Carson Palmer. Carson Palmer. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. He's... That's right. What's that? Pale, I, pale. I looked up a list of... Best quarterbacks never won a Super Bowl. Jim Frank, Fran Tarkenton was right there, number three. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> he did say our age, though. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, kind of referenced. Mm -hmm. He referenced like kind of modern, but then we went Marino and immediately, so yeah. we kind of blew. Jim the, Kelly as well. Right? Yeah, we <laughs> kind of blew the doors off the entire. Well, you, you grew up watching Kelly and Marino. You didn't grow up watching Fran Tarkenton <laughs> no. in the seventies. Well, Jim Kelly, uh, you know, big connection to Plum, yes. where we're from. His center at the U is the guy whose kid set up the interview yesterday with Cole Beasley mm -hmm. that we couldn't hear. Oh, oh yeah, nice. Yeah. So oh, big, Jared? Yeah, Jared and Jason Barbarino. Uh -huh. Incredibly handsome kids. Sure. Okay, family is awesome. Good people. Oh, yeah. But, you know, you kind of hear about the Jim. So I kind of paid attention to Jim Kelly because of the direct connection to the town that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, they did a terrible job yesterday, okay? And, and I think the rest of the Barbarino <laughs> family is potentially – uh, uh, like kind of shooing Jason Barbarino away at the yeah. moment yeah. because of what happened yesterday with Cole Beasley. Be. <laughs> that was maybe the worst interview we've ever. Jerry Rice number one, Cole Beasley number two yesterday. <laughs> yeah, you, right there. You might be right. Jerry Rice was the worst conversation I've ever had with any human that either speaks English or doesn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I've been around the world a couple of times and I've had that's the worst conversation I've ever had. Even walking into like a, a uh, I was in a rave in Germany, okay, one time, just walking up to the bar, person spoke, no English, obviously. We had an interaction that was maybe 60 to 70 times better than me and Jerry Rice talking, yeah. okay? Yesterday's Cole Beasley reminded me of Jerry Rice during it, mm -hmm. and it wasn't Cole Beasley's fault. No. It was just simply the fact that there were steel workers <laughs> right on the microphone, <laughs> beating the brakes <laughs> off of some fucking railroad. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how that happens, but I would assume it was Jason Barbarino's fault, so that'll be our blame on this entire thing. That's fair. And Dan Marino went to high school with my dad. Oh, yeah. Graduated same year. So they were not friends, but graduated same year. Reno had a sick fucking fro, dude. Oh, uh -huh. I can imagine. Sick fro. He liked to have a good time, allegedly, back in the day. A cocaine dad? Jesus Whoa, dude. Christ. Dude. dude. You can't. Do what? That. I mean, you what? could have at least said snowflake. Bro. <laughs> Yeah, like right, so yeah. decorated it a little yeah, bit. I didn't make the nickname up. I'm just, I'm just oh, reading the reporting. Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, okay, all right. Let's go to John in North Kakalaka. John, what's going on? Hi, the boys. How's it going today? Not too shabby. How are you, dude? Doing well, man. Doing well. I was wondering since Urban Myers had Honcho down in Jacksonville now, who do y'all think he's going to poach in the NFL to help build that staff? I'm betting. This is strictly off of a text message that happened between me and a Buckeye hero. I bet you one of the Buckeye heroes are getting hired down there. Ooh. Really? Whoa. I bet you one of the Buckeye heroes get hired down there. Whoa. The general? No, I just made that up. By oh. the way. Defense coordinator for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Bobby Carpenter? No, I, I believe I believe there is. A, we'll talk to A.J. Hawk in the third hour about it, and I'm going to push him hard. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. he sent me a text this morning about what could possibly happen, something he's hearing. And I'm like, well, if A.J.'s hearing it, that's pretty. Yes. You know what I mean? And it might be breaking news, actually. Oh. It's one of the Buckeye heroes, though. It has something to do with Buckeye. Oh, my God. It's mangled the O-line coach down there? He was not a Buckeye hero. Look at the box. It's right next to Oh, you mean on the Schlegs? He's going to be the D-line coach. Well, I, I don't cereal. know. I don't know. Oh, oh. He's going to be the head strength. Schlegs. That. I mean, look at the guy. You know what he's going <laughs> to. That's he's allegedly good. potentially wow. happening. Wow. The only way you look like that and you're not the head strength and conditioning coach is if you're Dan Campbell and you're head coach of the I am just Rangers. reporting, by the way, what I was kind of – we're not reporting this as something that's happened. No, no. no. This is a possibility. Yes. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I, I would assume there's going to be more Ohio State names that you're going to start hearing potentially start to work their way down there. Whoa. I saw some people comment that, you know, you need to get Tim Tebow in their stat run game coordinator, maybe uh, FCA guy. 
Yeah, yeah. minister. Have, yeah, have him be the pastor, you mm -hmm. know, every Saturday night and Sunday before games. Those guys used to go into those things, and I'd be sitting in a room next to it, and every once in a while they'll start singing over there, you know what I mean? And ever, if you're a Catholic, I guess a local priest comes and does the service too, so you get a chance to kind of like realize, the, you know, different cities, pastors, and, and priests and everything like that. Hmm. Yeah, they used to have a good time. They used to try to talk me into going in there all the time. Uh, you didn't go in one time? Well, normally I just nap. As soon as we landed, yeah. I take a nap, wake up, let's do these meetings. I'm going to eat a snack, probably stay up later than everybody down here until I have to go up, and then I'm going to watch Saturday Night Live probably, and then... I fall asleep. That yep. was kind of what I did up there. But there was a couple of times I felt like I did miss a show because there was loud singing popping off. Mm -hmm. There was some yelling going on one time, and I was like, "What did I miss?" And they were like, "It's your fault for not going in there." And I was like, "Vinny, tell me what I missed in there." A guy basically willed them to a victory, you know, in yeah. there, during that prayer thing. So maybe Tim Tebow's that guy. Maybe yeah. Tim Tebow's the pray guy for for Jacksonville Jaguars. Maybe he's the team morale builder. Oh. I mean, go ahead and do that. But then he'd have to give up on his illustrious MLB career. You, is he still playing? He's still playing. He's still playing. He's taking right. hacks. I'm proud of him for doing that. Mm -hmm. Are you? He's not listening to anybody else tell him that he should go do the 15 other things that he could go have great success at immediately. Well, and I guess it doesn't matter because he's still doing all that stuff, which is probably why he still fucking stinks on the baseball field. No, well, let's. <laughs> can we please? Can we please have a little bit of respect for when Tim Tebow started baseball? He was all in on baseball. He was. He disappeared from everything else. Right? Yeah, yeah, true. And as the season here got a little bit COVID-y and everything else, he you did start seeing him do other things. But I think that's all in the off season. You know, he's on the bus. I think well, during, yeah. the, during the baseball season. That's the thing, though. If you want to be good at baseball, you know, especially when you haven't played in quite some time, you're trying to make it to the bigs. You can't really take an off season, especially uh, when you can't fucking catch a, a can of corn. You know, he uh, can't catch. No, I mean he's fucking bubbling the ball out in the outfield. You, you, you can't Is that a, real? Yeah, can't have a guy fucking <laughs> DH and if he's batting 180 and hitting a homer every 15 at bats. I mean, that, he's below the Mendoza line. What, what is going on here? The, is guy, this... the guy stinks in baseball. That's what's going on. I mean, I love Tebow. We met him in person. He is the nicest guy on the planet. He's dead. Tim, go make your money at, you know, at the SEC or something on ESPN. They got you on all these shows. You stink at baseball. Fucking give it up. Does he, he, come on, I saw him dude. hit a dinger on a guy. Yeah. He, he did. Moonshot. You know what the other team did? They said, all right, that, that guy ain't fucking dude. got it if he's grooving fastballs down the middle. Oh, of they cut that guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, pal, this is double A. You clearly don't got him. Why don't you go down to fucking rookie ball? Get out of here. Yeah, give him a break. He batted 163 last year. Stop yeah. Bad. Well, it was COVID. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Season got cut short. He gave you the big viral Sorry. moment, too, Ty. Yeah, Ty with the Jesus. That's love what him. I said. Dude. I love Tim Tebow. That does not mean he doesn't stink at baseball. <laughs> All right. Real question. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Okay. And you do get paid by me, so a lot of people will think, <laughs> a lot of people will think that your answer will not be truthful. Okay. Oh. Okay. Sure. If I was to focus on baseball, you think for like a year, disappear from everything, focus on baseball. Do you think my minor league career would be similar to Tim Tebow's? I think you would be more successful than Tebow, honestly, from what I saw. Okay. And, and now you have to remember, he does get paid am, by me. I am employed by this. <laughs> <laughs> and I have thrown BP to him before. But I, I think I, mean, I was you, supposed to be a baseball player. Honestly, the way your body's built and everything, if you would have been playing baseball from the time you were like, you know, eight or whatever, you, I mean. Tim McAfee, who currently has war boots on outside. Oh, yeah. He does. He hated baseball so bad, wouldn't let me play it. Yeah. Hated the sport so bad, wouldn't let us play it. I mean, you got, you got fucking legs bigger than Roger Clemens and that and son of a bitch was throwing. Yeah, that, he was throwing 100 miles an hour for a long time. And he's connected with the ball on the wrong side of the plate. Wrong I side need of the to plate. see you in a cage yeah. as a lefty. Yeah, I think we need to see me in a game as a lefty. <laughs> People, that, that, we need to see me in a game. People as a don't talk about your fielding. You were flawless in that you. game. That, well, granted, ball did get shot over my head, and I did not get it. But Good communication, though. James, my guy, James, yeah. got it for me there. But that's another thing, too. Like, actually, like, fielding, like, a, a pop fly in one of those games when you've never had any experience doing that, like, that's a, that's a tough yeah, thing to just pick up on the fly and, and – Good pun. No, it's catching punts. It's catching punts, yeah. which is good. That I, I used but to get still, like so the, bored in practice, I would go do that. It helped me for my baseball a career. A baseball moves way differently than a football in the air, yeah. you know? I mean. But I think whenever you're punt returning, your first thing is to go forward, mm -hmm. right? And that's kind of like the baseball Same thing, thing, right? First like, step, always back. Yeah, because you kind of got to wait for it. It's like, let, let's let the ball decide Ooh. how deep I got to go mm -hmm. here. You know, and that patience, I think, did help from the punt game. But baseball, that curveball that was thrown to me, now, granted, I was on oh. the wrong side of the plate. 
Amazing. That fucking thing. I've never felt more unathletic in my life. I thought I was going to fall and I didn't even hit anything. And that's Tebow's thing. Can't hit, can't hit a curveball. Can't hit the off speed. You know, I mean, if someone grooves, and you're not saying that's an easy thing to do. No, absolutely you're saying compared not. to people that because Tim Tebow is shitting on what probably a hundred million dollars worth of jobs if he wants. Oh yeah, he's he, he's so successful in the football world. Mm-hmm. He's obviously incredibly handsome. He's made it seems like zero mistakes in his life, and right. we got a chance to meet him. Incredible guy, real. Yeah. But he loves baseball, and he said he's not going to let other people dictate what he wants to do. That's why he's been sticking with it. Which is great. I'm just wondering how long the fucking Mets are going to keep up with this charade. They got a new owner. They're really starting to put pieces together yeah. to be a good team. I mean, we don't need the goddamn Tim Tebow sideshow anymore. <laughs> Send the ESPN. <laughs> Love you, Tim. Or Fox, by the way. Or there's Fox. an opening spot Ooh. now on that Saturday. Or yeah. Yeah. Fox. Hey, by the way, there's an opening on that Saturday football show. Oh. Huh. Hmm. Well, well, well. Interesting. Oh, well, well. oh, how the tables turned. Turned. Let's go to Talon in Utah. That is a real thing. That is a job that has just opened up, huh? Yeah. That's a good show. Could be. Mm-hmm. I don't what? watch it. I see the clips. Liner, that's T Bone, Reggie Bush. Handsome, what I just, what I just, that's what I'm saying. What I just felt like, though, is I just lied there because I have never watched the entire show. But the clips I see, very good. There you go. Very yeah. handsome. Fucking AJ's brother in law's on there. Yeah. Yeah. Brady Quinn. Remember him in Notre Dame? He was king of the world there for king a while. Oh, yeah. To the Bush push. Him and Jeff Samarja. They have all the kings. Oh, oh Samarja. He's playing baseball right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. That son bitch could play. Yeah, he could. He used to go up and get that deep ball, too. Mm-hmm. Just lanky white out there yeah, fucking flying around. Uh-huh. Very good. Who was there? there was another Notre Dame. Um, no, I guess it was. No, uh, the safety also boxed. Tom, Tom Zivikowski. Yeah. Bro, oh, he was yeah. a teammate at the Colts of mine. Friend of mine for a bit whenever he was here. Awesome, absolutely awesome dude. He enjoyed beer, and I, I think since has completely flipped around. I think he's working as a fireman. Ooh. Really? He was hysterical. At Notre Dame, he sold out Madison Square Garden and knocked the motherfucker out in the first round, I think, or second round, got paid while playing at football. It was a big NCAA thing because the NCAA is anti any player making any money yeah. doing anything. But since it was a different sport, different field, yeah, I think he sold out Madison Square Garden. They drove over there and drove back from college, and he just knocked a guy out, made a bunch of money, went back to college at a time of their life. Yeah, because he was a gold gloves boxer, I think. Yeah, very he? good. Yeah. Very good at boxing. Mm-hmm. He and I at Buffalo Wild Wings did the, uh, the punch weight thing. He was teaching me some things, which have paid off in the Oculus Ring. <laughs> which have paid off in the Oculus Ring. He's a cool dude. He should come on this show. He's a really cool dude. That'd be awesome. He was very fun to watch in college. He, in the NFL, he was fun, too. He used to mm-hmm. fly around. I forget what happened. Baltimore? He was, he, Baltimore and he, then Indy. Yeah. And then ended with the Bears. I don't really remember him playing for the Colts at all, but I, I do remember him playing in Baltimore. He was, a, he was a punt returner, too, I think. Mm-hmm. He was awesome. He used to bring the wood. I wonder how he feels about my Oculus boxing. You might have to get him in the ring. What's that, dude? Might have to get him in the arena. I, I don't know if I want him to come in there. Stay out, please. It's kind of my world, Tom. It's kind of my world. Stick I don't, to the real boxing. Don't need you to come in here. Okay, and kind of ruin everything I got going on. I guess on Creed, the Creed game, you can fight against other people. Okay, right? here we go. Yeah, yeah, so I think we're getting there. It's a multiplayer, so unless you two are fighting two other people, I'd assume you can fight each other, right? That- that yeah, yeah that makes sense. Tag team less, boxing, less street fight. Oh. You guys are back to back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, just, oh, that'd be sweet. <laughs> Throw him, Tommy. <laughs> like Walker, Texas, Texas Ranger, and I. I feel pretty good about my Oculus boxing. Not against Tom. By the way, that was not Chuck Norris. Is what <laughs> 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 the internet was live sure? one morning i woke up chuck norris is at the top oh, here yeah. anytime an old is trending you automatically go oh dead, dead oh dead. no dead dead and then you look chuck norris number one and we wake up take a shit it's like oh no chuck died no, dude not chuck and then they that photo chuck norris is out here with that i just want to let everybody know anybody thought that was really chuck norris i think i think you're wishing pretty deep for that one mm-hmm. that guy looked like a uh Never used a quite a messed life. out Chuck Norris. Yeah. Yeah. Which, hey, which, by the way, who knows how he's been handling quarantine? We do not know. No. So I guess it could have been, which is what the internet said. But turns out Chuck came out and said that was not him. But do we know? It's the internet. We don't know bullshit. He has like three bull flexes in his hoss. He's fine. Yeah, he's Chuck Norris, dude. Yeah. You remember when that, those things oh, came yeah. around? Oh, nice. oh, yeah. Twice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Chuck Norris run had a had quite. A, it ended Good with him in dodgeball. Yeah. Man, you know what I mean? Fucking Chuck Norris. Good old Thank days you, of the Chuck Norris. Let's go to. Uh, I would assume this is Dakota, but it's spelled Dakota in Georgia. What's going on? 
Hey, Pat. Thank you again for accepting my bet on that Bearcat Bulldog Dakota. Game. This is Dakota. Yeah. yeah. Dakota, yeah. Huh. Hey, I want to let you know, Dakota, I did reference you immediately after that game. I said, I owe somebody in Georgia something <laughs> called into the show. It's a shame we don't have his information is what I said. Absolutely. And when you looked into it, I think you and Mitt had exchanged DMs, right, at one point? Yes, sir. Okay, Dakota. You know it's bullshit. You guys shouldn't have won that. If you guys didn't have the greatest kicker to ever kick in college football, 54 fucking yarder to win that thing, you guys lose to Cincinnati just like you lost to West Virginia back in the day whenever I was there in the whole thing. Did you think about that at all during the game and also on the other side of this bet, Dakota? Well, old J.C. Daniels is out there slicing and dotting the defense like a nine-year-old playing Fruit Ninja. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, Georgia went from hot rod to hot pod who hit a dong shot <laughs> with that 54-yard ball. <laughs> Shout out to I Cody. was worried. I'm not going to lie. I was worried. Cincinnati played a hell of a ball game. All right. Did you get your information to Mitt so we can send you something? Yes, I did. All right. Well, congrats on that. We can't wait to hear from you again, Dakota. What do we send to him? He was going to buy us, what, a bunch of lava cakes? Yeah, I think know. so. I mean, Cincinnati well, covered. Just returned the favor. Cincinnati did cover, but that was not. I mean, I was coming out drumming pretty hard that Cincinnati was going to win the whole game. You know what I mean? Just like the Pens last night. The overhit Jeez. and Sid scored. I went 2-1 and one last night, but it, nobody's talking about that. In the gambling thing, nobody's talking nah. about that. I mean, plus 210 on Sydney scoring, it's pretty much 3-1. and one. Is that for, You're right. You're, you're 100 percent I went 3-1 and one last night in my, in my hockey sharp, potentially. Feels like nice. it, that, it does feel like it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Let's get to another phone call here let's go to jacob in texas okay cool welcome jacob how are doing? hey great how are you doing today great how are you jacob jesus that's on me i didn't hit i didn't hit the answer no, the phone thing on no time. man that's on me that's yeah on me. well i mean some would say but it, <laughs> i would take the blame here jacob this is on me what do you want to talk about what part of texas are you in uh i'm actually in fort worth so it's a little bit west of uh dallas that's where the airport is right mm -hmm. yeah dallas fort worth area DFW. i saw DFW. my favorite airport interaction because at dfw they have like security gates while you're just walking by them so it's like they just pop up because of how big it is you know because it's american airlines home or whatever i seen a guy cowboy hat the everything i thought this was america moment they coming through security at wow. tsa at the airport i stopped obviously this guy took everything out of his pocket boots off hat off fucking belt buckle it was the most <laughs> texas thing i've ever seen in my life then he gets back on gives him a fuck off and walks off it was <laughs> amazing i had like a two three hour layover over there it was the best moment i've ever seen just everything you could now i'm not saying everybody from texas is like that but <laughs> like the cartoon of texas yeah. happened right in front of me <laughs> in texas it was awesome i appreciate it. tell that man i appreciate that if you see him jacob i appreciate you buddy we got to get to a break here jacob probably had a good question oh yeah and that's 100 percent on me just for you know not enough time but that dallas fort worth airport is very nice very nice airport. But you see Everybody. a lot of weapons in there, like that guy. Like humans? Yeah. That, it's just. Well, and weapons. It's a hub, though. Like it's yeah, a full, it's a it's a big hub. Like a lot of people coming and going. Anytime you get to an airport where you're just walking by and security is just right here, it's like, oh, these people didn't know how big they were going to get. Mm -hmm. They just started have having to toss TSAs into all these places. And that DFW, I thought this was America. <laughs> Fucking awesome. Just big old COVID cowboy hat, Ooh. Mm -hmm. belt buckle, the whole nine. The whole thing. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> it was awesome, dude. I wish I could. Will airports ever have those again? Oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Are airports back? Are people flying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just need to put a couple starships in each airport. We'll be all right. What's that? Throw a couple starships in each airport. You'll get to each, you know, one side of the country in two minutes. You're talking about the $5 million spaceships that Elon Musk is pumping out once every three days. That's right. Yeah. Ooh. That'll be good. Mm -hmm. We should put those in there. It'll be easy. We need to buy those stats. We also need to get to the break. Hour two is on the other side. We have Justin Jefferson and Darius Slay. Yeah. Ooh. Cannot wait to talk to them. You got about six minutes here on Sirius XM. Go ahead and take a shit. We'll see you soon. Just checking your Yeah, I, I got a plane uh, that's supposed to take me down to game day anyway, so I could definitely have it go to Buffalo first. How long is the flight from Indy to Buffalo? If you can find us a plane for like 4 o'clock, I think that'll be perfect. It has to be reduced in part around 5, 5.30. Okay, do we have any other, can you find any other planes that can get us out of here? I was just asked if I could appear in Buffalo within the next four hours to basically do the show on Fox tonight. Okay, I'll call you back. 
You know what I'm asking for? Yeah. All right, so he's gonna call Jim Mercy and see if I can just use Jim's jet. He's calling me back shortly, but just start packing. Hey. You're the absolute best. Does this sound like a potential yes you're saying? He's the uh, fucking best. I would be so, so thankful. Hey, okay. this is really cool. I don't know how many billionaires would do this for people that have worked for them in the past. This is awesome, and I can't thank you guys enough. Can I take a kendo stick to his back? Uh, we'll talk about it when you can't hear this. <laughs> All right, I appreciate you, man. Hey, let's break the fucking internet tonight. <laughs> what a hilarious life. We are live on Fox in six hours and 35 minutes. Three hours of sleep, no clue what the storylines are. Just fucking let the nuts swing, bro. Let's just go out there and have a good time. Plane company. Holy shit. <laughs> I know, I know. Here we go, boys. Oh. All right, we're on Fox night that night. This is gonna be a night we're gonna look back on and remember. And then we're gonna hop on a plane and head to Memphis for college game day. I think this is a joke too. I just want to let you know, like this is the Truman Show. I very much understand that this is not supposed to happen. So like, I got the text at 1.42 p.m. today from Mr. H that says, have you heard there have been some travel issues? Uh, can you make your way to Buffalo? Jim Irsay, owner of the Colts, literally lent me his plane. He might be the most confident I've ever been on in something. I didn't know we were that good of friends, to be honest. I was, sh I was throwing a Hail Mary and he responded and said, yeah. So I got here about an hour and a half before the show and to work with Renee, Tom, and be on SmackDown with a bucket of makeup on my face. This has been a dream come true bucket list type situation here in beautiful Buffalo, New York. Come on, boys, we're gonna be on cable. We're joined here by Pat McAfee, replacing our guest uh, commentator, Aiden English. No sleeves in, George. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, it feels good here in Buffalo. I got a text from the game, a cerebral WWE official. He said, hey, you might have heard about the travel issues. Can you make it to Buffalo? I said, absolutely. What a magical evening it is, November 1st, 2019. I mean, let's be honest. The Marine was a heater. You know what I mean? Oh. I mean he's a great actor. He was great on the real world. He was great on all of that. Oh. Take a no <laughs> That's how they do it in NXT, baby. Almost took me out holding another grown lady in the air. November 1st, 2019, greatest SmackDown in the history of SmackDown. Pat, you joining us? It might absolutely be correct the way things have gone here tonight. happening so it's really just a natural reaction to everything oh, that was awesome dude that's a bucket that's a real bucket list thing game day bucket list this is a complete bucket list two in one week oh yeah but a horseshoe shoved up my ass and a horseshoe owner lending us a plane are you kidding me look i don't understand the whole legal gambling thing i've been gambling illegally my whole life i i don't get what you mean by fan duel sports book Dude, illegal gambling is done. It stinks. Legal gambling is the greatest thing of all time. FanDuel Sportsbook has so many good bets. They even refund bets that they think didn't deserve to lose. They got all the spreads. They got same game parlays. You have to start gambling on FanDuel Sportsbook if you're in a legal state. And... That's not the only thing. They make it so easy to withdraw and deposit money. You can just link your bank, deposit whatever you want, withdraw whatever you want, whenever you want. Yes, I mean, please. this truly is the greatest sports gambling app out there. He's right about the banking. It is the greatest. But you really don't understand the bets that this sports book has. They have in-game bets. They have in-game parlays. And he said it, but I'm going to say it again. The odds at this place are the best and once you download FanDuel Sportsbook we are going to take all of their money all of their money right 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 FanDuel 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 Are you driven? Are you bold? Can you turn this into something on your own? I gotta ask you, what's your motivation? 
Is it riches? Is it gold? Is it something you can find within your soul? I gotta ask you, what's your motivation? Is it music? Is it love? Maybe not a maybe all the D above. I gotta ask you, what's your motivation? Is it faith in the beloved? Is it something you don't plan on giving up? I gotta ask you, what's your motivation? Are you driven? Are you bold? Can you turn us into something? The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Oh, is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. <laughs> welcome, welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show. Hour two begins right there. Now, a hilarious little situation happened on the video side of the show there because some buttons were pushed, some behind the scenes were synced uh, abruptly there in the middle of a video airing. We can't thank you enough for joining us here on this Thursday, January 14th. Urban Myers, the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Troy Aikman says uh, Peterson wanted Hurts. Lurie wanted Carson Wentz because the contract. Who knows? We'll dive into that a little bit later. Uh, James Harden was traded to the Nets, a la COVID Cowboy Diggs. He missed a lot of information, but he got (laughs) that. Uh, Stefanski's back at practice. Tomlin and the Steelers have gotten rid of the offense coordinator, offensive line coach, and DB's coach. What does that mean going forward for the Steelers? Is Ben Roethlisberger going to be the quarterback of the Steelers next year? Oh, Who knows? Oh, definitely not. Who knows? And the NHL had a one-day season. It is over. Congrats to the NHL. Congrats. Congrats. Good season. Good season. Good season. Good season. The Pens aren't going to win the Cup. Guess what? The league might as well not even happen. Yep. Joining us now is a man who uh, basically broke every single rookie record that you could possibly break at the position that you play. Uh, He was drafted out of LSU. There's actually a video of the team that drafted him seeing another team right before them draft another wide receiver and them laughing in that team's face because they knew that they got it wrong by not drafting this man. Wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings, all pro, pro bowler in one season. He's only going to get better somehow. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Jefferson. What's up, dude? What's good? How was the season, man? Long season? Was your body ready for it? Was it longer than you thought? How do you feel right now? Uh, It definitely was longer than I thought. Uh, You know, those 17 weeks definitely catch up to you. But, um, you know, a lot of guys in the locker room had told me different ways to to really, you know, relax my body and make sure my body is right for for every week. Uh, Okay, so now that you're about to have off time for the first time in your life, people forget about this. Whenever you're a rookie in the NFL and your season ends, first of all, that's the longest season because you're going from your junior or senior year in college straight through for combine prep, right into draft, right into OTAs, right into training camp, right into the longest season you've ever had in your life. So that's the longest year of all time. Then as soon as your rookie season's over, it's the first time in your entire life, basically, that your life hasn't been scripted for you for the first couple months. Now, granted, the world is not what it normally is. What are you thinking about doing here, Justin? How are you going to enjoy your down? time you're gonna be playing video games you're gonna be going out you're gonna be grittying all over the world <laughs> yeah. you're gonna take some trips oh what are you gonna do J- uh, justin all of above uh, <laughs> you know, i'm gonna be uh in some sunshine just relaxing um you know just like you said this is the first time really i, I really get to to relax my body and uh really enjoy life for a little bit so um you know definitely looking forward to to really you know getting some off time and and getting some vacation Justin, why'd you have so much success this year? And not just you, by the way. You obviously were the standout in the wide receivers, but rookie wide receivers this year had a hell of a year. Now, there's a whole new class coming into the NFL, uh, including Devontae and Jamar Chase, which you know very well. And there's, Do you think that's going to be a trend moving forward? Do you, guys, do you think that you were more prepared for the NFL with the way college football is now than maybe in years past? Um. I mean, just just me, just coming from uh, Joe Brady's offense, bringing that that Saints post style offense, uh, it kind of gave me a head start uh, to the league. You know, just going in to the league and and knowing the concepts, uh, it kind of was a little bit easier to to really, you know, grasp. So, um, 
I, I definitely I definitely feel like those guys are definitely going to come in and, and make a big uh, mark, uh, depending on what team they get drafted to. So hopefully they get drafted to a, a good organization that, that uses them right. And let's talk about that. Uh, you told Kirk Cousins to go fuck himself. On that. <laughs> that was wild. Did you hear him say yeah, that? Yeah, you said that. Yeah. You said it right insane. in the middle of a game. Right yeah. in the middle of a game. Fuck you, you, Kirk. You, 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 you didn't get a ball, and you stood there, and you grabbed a microphone. Do you remember? Yeah, it was wild. You grabbed a microphone, and you were like, Kirk Cousins, I hate you, basically. Go fuck yourself. Do you remember when you did that? I don't remember that one. <laughs> No, I, I loved that whole situation, though, how it blew up, right? Because my initial take on it was, oh, I feel like Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins have a very good relationship, as opposed to what people thought the other way. I thought, like, no, this happens on a much regular basis than people think. There's normally crowd noise. We got a chance. It sounded like one of them satellite things was literally right into your helmet whenever you said it. <laughs> but uh, how was your relationship with Kirk Cousins? And do you think that is a big reason, obviously, on why you had so much success this year? Our relationship was was very good. I, you know, at practice and, and stuff, we definitely connect well. Um, you know, just just trying to win games, trying to trying to make big plays. So, uh, you know, at practice, we're we're getting extra reps in. We're doing we're doing things to help the uh, offense up. So, um, you know, that that just really was just a, a frustration play. Um, you know, I felt like open on that play, and you know, I didn't get the ball. So, uh, kind of just like a frustration one, just. You know, just pouring out my emotions, but just like you said, there's there's no crowd noise, so you hear everything on the field. Hey, I will say this. You being emotional, you know, everybody talks about how you want your players to be passionate, okay? You want people on your team to have emotion, not just play for the check, but also play for everything like that. And then as soon as you do that, you hear a lot of the old whites go, did you hear what he said? <laughs> Whoa. To Kirk Cousins. It's like, yo, you right. can't, can't have it both ways here, yeah. okay? You can't have people that are invested and emotional. And then whenever you see moments in the height of competition, by the way, at the highest level, where there's right. some sort of conversation, that's a very interesting thing. We enjoyed it a lot over here. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we loved it. We ran it probably 20 times in the morning mm -hmm. because we, you, the flexing, too. Uh -huh. There was like no way where anybody could say it wasn't you. <laughs> it was like an entire – it was awesome. Diggs, what do you got? Justin, after you uh, broke all of his rookie records, uh, did Randy Moss call you? Do you guys – have a relationship does he talk to you at all about since you guys were you know within the same organization had great success as, success as rookies um we we made this little uh we did this video uh or like this zoom call of all the uh, the receivers from the vikings uh organization to to get the the rookie of the year award so uh, i kind of talked to those all of those guys at the same time uh you know just giving me the inside of you know, how to take on my NFL uh, season or, and the things that I have been doing all year. So, uh, you know, hopefully hopefully I can get this rookie of the year. Hey, we hope you get rookie of the year as well because the year that you had is one that's probably – I mean, it's going to be tough. Whenever you're talking about being in the, the conversation with Randy, I mean, that's just uh, – that's going to – what, it's once every generation probably. Yeah. So, you're, I mean, that's like a – I assume that's a high compliment. I know there's some players that kind of don't enjoy being compared to uh, past players or past greats. I would assume, even though you and Randy don't have the same style of play, whenever you're in the same conversation as guys like that, especially in the like, – you have to feel pretty good about that, right? Oh, 100%. Um, you know, he's a Hall of Famer. He's classified as one of the best receivers ever to play the game. So um, to be in the same sentence as him being compared to him, uh, you know, of course, I don't mind that at all. Um, you know, my, my goal is to be a Hall of Famer one day and be one of the best receivers of all time. So um, you know, definitely not definitely not scared of, of that comparison. So uh, there's definitely more work that I need to do and, and things that I need to fix to become uh you know a hall of fame will you train with anybody this off season will you train with like uh because there's always you know the internet shows like groups of guys that are working out you know and back in the day i think it maybe wasn't as known by people that people from different teams train together i mean there's stories coming out about peyton and tom brady in the off season getting together and training together that i think if it would have came out at the time people would have lost their minds about but we kind of hear about it now now we kind of get a chance to see it whether it's the offensive line that gets put together a defensive uh, ends can have a group together. It feels right. like everybody's kind of trying to help each other out. Will you train with anybody this off season, or you do your work alone? Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, train. I mean, you train with the best. The best train with the best. So, uh, of course, I want to train with the top guys of, of the league. You know, I, I talk to Devontae Adams, talk to Stephon Diggs. So, uh, you know, Odell. So, 
talking to those different guys, uh, you know, definitely wanting to train with them and see uh, all the information that they can give to me to, to help my game out. What were you doing those? We guys run routes. Will there be like what did they give you different drills to do? Like what would those training sessions look like for a wide receiver? Um, really just just giving me information that to, to help anything that I, I have a problem with. You know, if it's releases, if it's uh, running different routes, if it's you know how to get open during this this coverage or how the cornerback is playing you. So uh, there's definitely definitely different ways to, to help my game and to improve. And um, you know, guys like Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams, and you know those different guys definitely have some 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 tricks up their sleeve. You had the most receiving yards by a rookie in the Super Bowl era, okay? That's a hilarious stat to have. I would have that as my Twitter bio <laughs> immediately <laughs> if I had. But what do, do you – did you do a self-scout, I assume, at the end of the year already? Have you done that type of thing yet and be like, okay, this is something that I feel like I got to work out? Or was that, was that happening during the year? Were you taking notes during the year? Like, when do you realize, like, okay, I want to get better at – uh, whether it's my breaks uh, to the right side or to like, when do you decide what you think you have to get better at? Um, I kind of look at it, you know, throughout the season and, you know, especially you can definitely uh, look at it after the season when, when, you know, you stop playing, but um, yeah, throughout the season, just different things that uh, I felt that I needed to work on, um, you know, definitely uh, having to work on that, that press man coverage, you know, just working on different releases um, especially, you know, this upcoming season, we have a lot of top corners that we're going against. So I definitely have to, you know, reach in my bag and, and find those new tricks to get open. <clears throat> I was always a hand guy. Ooh, Whoa, see you know what I mean? I was always a hey, Devonte uses Gone. no hands. Yeah, now. <laughs> But I was always a, you know, I'm a ninja. I'm a ninja, chop you down. That was always my move. If you need me to come down and do anything, you let me know. I'll kind of, I'll kind of give you some of the insights. Oh, what do you got, Connor? Justin, you mentioned Devonte and Diggs as guys you'll train with. Will you watch the games this weekend to just see how they go up against uh, their matchups? Oh, 100%. hundred um, percent. I'm definitely looking forward to to that uh, Green Bay and. and Rams game with Devontae Adams and Jalen Ramsey. So uh, definitely going to be looking at that to see how that matchup goes. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big Devontae Adams fan, so uh, definitely going to be rooting for him and, and see how good he does. What do you – what have you noticed about the difference between the NFL corners – and college corners, because obviously the SEC, it's different down here. You play against a lot of NFL talent down there. But once you get in the NFL, there's NFL IQ, there's NFL defenses, yeah. there's everything. What is the difference between NFL corners? Like, for instance, Jalen, whenever you watch him play, it looks like he's floating sometimes whenever he's making a play. And there's not a lot of Jalens out there in any level or anything like that. But what has been the biggest difference? Is it the overall athleticism? Is it the schemes? What has it been, you think, the difference between NFL and college DBs? Uh, well, one, um, you know, of course, you know, being LSU, being a big program, you know, um, we don't play, you know, top teams every single week. So um, having having to play a top corner or a top team every single week in the NFL, it, it definitely gets tough. It gets, um, you know, a toll on your body. You get, you get tired. So um, and, and two, they're, they're smarter. Um, they're definitely patient. Um, you know, they're they're looking at their techniques. Um, they're studying a whole bunch of film on you. So uh, those moves that that those moves that you did last week definitely uh, are not going to be able to work um, going up against you know that corner the the next week. So you definitely got to you know change some some stuff up and you know change the way you move. You your routes are so sick this yeah. year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey. Your routes were nasty this year. They, they were running them as highlights. They were running fucking routes as highlights. <laughs> yeah. You know, like they, they were like, look at this. And it was just you in the middle of the open field. Hey-ya! And then the guy just leaving or whatever. Snatch Normally it'd be a big catch or whatever. Like, look at this man run on a football field. It was, it was absolutely – has that been like – when did you realize that that was going to have to be one of the main focuses? Because I feel like whenever they say somebody's a great route runner, nobody really understands what that means. It's like, oh, no, they put in a lot of work to be able to cut very quickly. Like, have you always been a great route runner? Is that always something you've been able to take advantage of defenses with? Like, how did that become your thing? Because it's like your thing is, is how you shake the shit out of people at the top of your routes. Well, um, I mean, of, of course not. Uh, me, I, I started playing receiver, uh, you know, in high school. So uh, I didn't really get, you know, that much experience at, at receiver. So me going into LSU, um, I have my favorite coach, Coach Jerry Sullivan. Uh, he 
coaches for the Cardinals now. Um, you know, he came in, I came in, and he he, he helped me tremendously um, with different ways to get open, with releases, um, ways to, to break down and, and get quicker on my breaks. So um, he definitely helped me and, and made me into a better route runner and better receiver. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Did you play basketball growing up as well? Yes, yes. Were you good? You, you couldn't shoot, huh? <clears throat> shoot the lights out, man. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know. I was just, I was just, normally, because if you could just shake everybody, you know, you get a bit greedy, you're just going to yep. the rack every time. For those of us that can't just wiggle our way through every LA fitness pickup game, you have to be able to have range. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? I, I have to be able to pop off from, from way back. <laughs> Ty, what do you got? Justin, after everything you've seen this year, um, who's gritty is worse, Kirk Cousins or Adam Thielen? Yeah, great question. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to have to go with Kirk. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna have to. Uh, but, I mean, Kirk, Kirk, that was the first time I ever seen Kirk do it the whole season. So, uh, you know, at, at least I got to, to picture how he does it, how, how he do it. So I can work with him a little bit. Uh, Kirk yeah. probably worked that night at the house, huh? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, for the mirror. Wait until I boss this out. It's like kids doing it with him. It's like a pair of shoes, you uh-huh. know, like a, like wait until they see this. <laughs> and that's, that's what Kirk did at the house. I'm like, how you guys feel? How you feeling? Vikings final meeting. What was the message? Um, you know, of course we didn't want to go one and five at the beginning of the season. Uh, I mean, that, that hurt us tremendously uh, with, you know, not being able to get to the playoffs and everything. But um, that second that second part of the season, um, you know, that's when we really became alive. Uh, that's when we really started to play Vikings football. And, um, you know, that's that's when we really started to, to buy into what was going on. You know, we wasn't used to not having any fans in the stadium. Uh, you know, the energy was dead. Huh. Uh, so it, it definitely was a different feel. Um, but we just really just got to, to that winning stage a little too late. Well, it was fun to watch you guys down the stretch there. thought you were potentially going to make a – entrance a backdoor entrance into the playoffs hope you enjoy the hell out of your offseason justin you deserve it can't wait to see what you do and how you come back even better bub yes sir appreciate it hey let me know if you need anything you know Ooh, you. Oh. I need some fools, man. okay i got you ladies and gentlemen justin jefferson <laughs> yeah. hold on justin hold on justin hold on hold on justin what's that uh, Chad Johnson just tweeted that he heard you'll be at house of athlete which is brandon marshall's f- training facility and he said he will personally lock you up on 101. Ocho, oh. gonna lock you yes. down. By the way, talk about good route runner. Talk about good route yeah. runner. Ocho said he's gonna lock you down. And give you a PowerPoint tutorial. He's reading the tweet right now. Yeah, I heard he will be at House of Athlete at Brandon Marshall's facility training this offseason in Weston. I will personally lock him up in one-on-ones and give a PowerPoint tutorial on route running, says Chad Johnson to Justin Jefferson. I got something for him. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Jefferson. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I thought you had breaking news. I didn't no, know. Well, it kind of was. Yeah. 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 kind of was. Ocho was always known as the guy who – his feet were just yeah. so damn impressive. What's that? We have breaking news? Was it the real Chad Johnson? Getting off a plane in Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, Urban oh. Meyer? Yeah. Wow. He's getting the gig, huh? He's flying on a, let's start judging the plane. Huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> that is a citation, it looks like. It looks like it's a little thin. I, a little thin yeah. I would prefer a Hawker, which is a little bit of a fatter plane. It's more like an SUV flying through the sky. <laughs> the citation is a little bit quicker. For those that don't know, a citation, and by the way, I'm not 100% certain that is a citation plane. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> if, if it is a citation plane, it was the original like Wall Street plane. Ooh. Like That was like the old school Wall Street plane. You know, like got money, let's go ahead and travel. Probably a lot of uh, cocaña and other things uh-huh. that have been done on Citation planes. Uh, so I am a, a Hawker fan myself. Unless it's the Citation 10, the Citation X, which is the fastest plane in the sky. It flies, uh, how fast was it? 750 miles an hour? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. moving. It takes an hour off of your flights if you need them. Uh, but if anything goes wrong, it is over. Now, that's basically with every plane. So yeah. I, I respect that they flew the plane up to get old Urban. He has landed in Duval County. Some info on what Urban Meyer is getting with the Jaguars. Most cap space in the league, 11 draft picks, first overall pick, talent on roster includes. Yeah, I got that. Uh, big congrats, Urban Meyer, getting a head coaching gig. Yeah, now. wow. I think he, I think he 
has always wondered if it would work mm -hmm. in the NFL. I talked to uh, – yesterday we talked to Rich Rod, by the way, which – um, that was a fun time. It was a very yeah. fun time. But I think Rich Rod, when I talked to him whenever he played Ole, or when Ole Miss played Mississippi State and I got the chance to talk to him for the first time, I asked him about coaching in the NFL, you know, because his offense is now in the NFL. Oh, yeah. And he said uh, – he basically told me he, he never had a, a vision to do it, but he always wondered if he would be able to work up there, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think Rich Rod would ever want to go up there, but he did have that answer. He was like, I always thought to myself, I wonder how many times Urban Meyer has thought to himself, like, I could probably go do the NFL if I had to. I wonder if he sees that Saban's the greatest college football coach of all time, mm -hmm. and he goes, you know what Saban couldn't do? He couldn't coach in the NFL. Let's go ahead and do that. Or if this is just to, you know, one final thing off the uh, bucket list to do is go have a successful NFL run as a coach. We'll see. Hope Hopefully he'll be able to stay healthy enough, okay? Mm -hmm. Last two stops have ended in health situations. Yeah. A lot of success. I, all, I guess Utah, he had success. Florida, he had yeah. success. Ohio State, he had success. Those are a very different sport than the NFL. We'll see how it goes down there in Duval County. Good for Jacksonville, though. They make a splash hire. Mm -hmm. Seems like that's what Shad Khan wanted. Now, granted, splash hires don't mean a goddamn thing if they don't work out. It's just a good headline. You win a day in the offseason. Will he be able to win some games? We shall see. He's going to surround himself with NFL coaches, he said. Ooh. Well, the report said. Who knows if he said that or if the Jacksonville Jaguar people said, hey, also we need this to get out there. Anybody that's attacking us for hiring a guy that doesn't know anything about the NFL, let's go ahead and get this out here as well. We're going to hire very, very super NFL knowledgeable coaches, basically was a report. A lot of NFL big brains coming in here with Urban Meyer as well. It's like, well, we'll see. I can't wait to see how it goes. What are you going to say, Diggs? I was going to say something dumb like maybe he'll bring Alex Smith in as a backup to Tudor to Trevor Lawrence since they were together at Utah. Uh, the, the, the interesting thing there is, what if Fields, mm. Ohio State guy, yeah. right? He's up there, what, the second quarterback in mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. mock drafts? Mm -hmm. Is Trevor Lawrence a lock to go to Jacksonville? And by the way, we told you just one week ago <laughs> yeah. that when this hire happens, this will be the exact conversation that will happen on sports shows everywhere. Is Urban Meyer in his Ohio State allegiances? So much so that when he's on the sideline of Ohio State games, he looks like he's still coaching Ohio State and Ohio State's games. Whenever he's doing the halftime show or the pregame show for Ohio State, he is talking as if he is still the Ohio State coach. He is loved in Ohio. Absolutely loved over there. Before the season started, he did say he would take Lawrence over Fields this year. We'll see. Okay. Mm. We'll, we'll see. see. Well, who does Sean come Well, Ohio State bury him if he doesn't take Fields <laughs> yeah. at number one or whatever. No. But also, yeah, what you're about to say, Sean Khan said he's he's calling shots around. Yeah, so who does he want? That's what we need to find out. How many trips on that yacht? Do you think Urban Meyer had to – which trip onto the yacht? Because they said they've been meeting for a month now at this point. Yeah. Which trip do you think Urban Meyer was finally like, all right, fuck it, you can make the decisions? You know, because I assume the first couple conversations were like, Sean Conn being like, I'd like to still have my hands on things. And Urban Meyer going, uh, yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> and leaving. Then coming back, hey, this is what we're thinking, money was in the control. Because everybody assumes that that's what is going to ultimately be the issue. Is Urban Meyer in college, you control every single moment of your players' lives. Whenever you don't have that control, is it still going to be able to work? We'll see how it goes. A.J. Hawk, who knows Urban pretty well, said he thinks Urban's going to do well up there. Mm. Say he's a good communicator, good leader. We'll see. He's not going to be the offensive guy or the defensive guy. He's just the head coach who's a rallier, which is what you need, by the way. Yeah. I think not always, but I feel like that has been a pretty good system in the NFL's history. Yeah, and to your point, I believe I saw one of the tweets this morning that like after the first meeting and stuff like that, those meetings were about facility upgrades and stuff like that that Urban wanted before he took the job. By the way, love that. All these other coaches are taking these Zoom calls, hoping and praying for a goddamn gig. Urban, since he had success in college, he's able to go down to Shad Khan's yacht and go, that practice facility ain't going to fucking cut it. Nope. <laughs> are we the Bengals, dude? Put a roof on that thing. A bigger pool. <laughs> Need to connect those pools. Yeah. Please. Please. Immediately. The cabanas, too? Family's going to need two of those. Uh-huh. All right? And then I would like, I don't know, fifty to 60,000 more people in the stadium. <laughs> Go ahead and build on top of that. Add an upper bowl. Shot Khan's like, I guess, man. All right. Let's Jesus. Do it. I mean, we could have hired goddamn Joe Brady. He was just begging for a gig. <laughs> God damn it. But we'll do it, I guess. Let's go. I, I feel like Urban Meyer, I feel like he has successful operations. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of question marks around every single one. Every single exit, there's a lot of question marks. People are like, what happened here? But I feel like he, I feel like he always has. I think I mean, he's, he's going to do okay. He's won everywhere. He's, everywhere. Went. he's literally won everywhere. But will the NFL he's college? Whenever you can pick your players, mm -hmm. that's a very. Whenever you can 
be a good salesman and get a, team, a, a family to allow their son to come to your school for whatever reason, however you're doing it, better than everybody else. That is a real weapon in college football that not everybody has. In the NFL, you can't do it. So I don't know how maybe it'll be big free agency build team. Okay, we want this guy, we want this yeah. guy, we mm -hmm. want this guy. I assume that is potentially going to happen. Maybe that's another conversation he had was having with Sean. Like, hey, we're going to have to spend money in free agency. Or maybe Urban Meyer will adapt his entire ability, use his big football brain, mm. and be able to direct it in the NFL style and have success. I'm intrigued to see how it plays out. This doesn't move the needle at all for like guys potentially going to Jacksonville like players, does it? I mean, Ohio State guys. Yeah. Well, Paul outside, Chip outside of Ohio State. State guys look for Ezekiel Elliott to get traded from the Cowboys. <laughs> Michael Thomas, Michael Thomas getting out of Saints. We know he doesn't like. He yeah, hates everything true. going on over there. Allegedly, why well, draft Trevor Lawrence when you get Dewey Haskins down there? Oh man, <laughs> right. bring in Dwayne Bosa. Well, Bosa's uh, both, yeah. both of them. Both of them. Both of Bosa's. Uh -huh. Bring him in. Let's go to Liam in Boston. What's going on, Liam? Hey, how's it going, Pat? Liam, I want to let you know that Mitt took a shot at spelling your name L E U M. Is your name oh. Loom? It is. No, it is Liam, like Neeson. Okay. L -I -O -M. Yeah. All right. I, and by the way, I could see how Mitt's brain could put that together there for Liam. And I appreciate yes. Mitt, I want to let you know I appreciate you back there, pal. You, you gave me your best bet. It's interesting, though, for some of these, I have to get into Mitt's brain. Yeah. You know, and, and kind of. I mean, lost it's not bad in there, by the way, Mitt. He just had Dakota, right? Yeah, Dakota. Tripping uh, on the rocks. What's going there. on, Liam? <laughs> uh, I'm doing all right. So I'm, I'm in Boston, um, but I'm, actually, I'm from Buffalo originally, so Bill's Mafia. Shut up. Um, and I wanted to call in and make sure that two unsung heroes on the Bills, um, that I think you probably know who I'm talking about, uh, Bohorquez and uh, Big Ball Bass, <laughs> Yeah, fucking knocked that 54 yarder in the playoff game. I think that needs to get talked about a little bit more. People are not talking about a rookie stepping up and making the longest kick a rookie has ever made in a playoff game. Shout out to Tyler Big Ball Bass. I love that dude. He has the one eye. Uh, the the uh, one eye is incredible. The one eye black. I mean, I assume whenever he gets a little bit older, he will regret that he did this. <laughs> but there's a lot of things that I did as a rookie and, and everything like that where, you know, like in our Super Bowl picture with the whole team, I have the biggest, fakest earrings from Claire's in them. I and I'm in the Ooh. front row because I'm number one. You know what I mean? And my hair looks ridiculous. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things. But I like that old Big Ball Bass. He's a weapon, by the way. That guy is an absolute weapon. Uh, great call, Liam. He's from Georgia Southern, I think. Oh, no. This is going to happen again. Earlier in the year, I confused Georgia Southern and Georgia State, and they came after me as oh. if I was supposed to know. That is a massive rivalry. Oh, wow. And I did say it on college game day, yep. and I got it wrong. So I apologize to both of them. Uh, they both lost Coast Carolina, so it doesn't fucking matter, but, <laughs> which is what I was referring to at the time. But Georgia Southern has a, a run of kickers, talented specialists. And Tyler Big Ball Bass, the kicker for the Bills, he, he seen, I've never been around him, so I don't know exactly. He seems like he's a little guy. He fucking slaughters footballs. I, I don't know how. I don't know. I don't think the physics are, are completely in play. He murders footballs. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun to watch because not a lot of kickers are like that anymore. A lot of kickers are so like um, – almost like golfers who just have like the perfect form and they're uh, not trying to really go for it. He is going for it every time. And I like that. I respect that. Listed at 5'10", 183. Yeah, he looks like a small Ooh, guy yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. He looks very thin. He'll probably, I assume he'll grow a bit muscular wise, but he, I like his mentality, the way he tries to murder balls. And Corey Bohorquez was the kid who hit the 80 yard punt and then flexed in the yeah. middle of him. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of the Bills specialist. As I am big fan of a lot of things in the Bills operation, except for Jason Barbarino. Oh, geez. <laughs> Jason yeah. Barbarino yeah. set up the call yesterday with Cole Beasley mm -hmm. and put him directly in front of the ironworks that was going on yeah. right behind him. Sabotage. Mm -hmm. So aside, I love everything that's going on in the Bills mafia, in the Bills uh, building, except for that particular situation with Jason Barbarino. Mm -hmm. Let's get to a break. <laughs> that Barbarino family's just hanging out in Plum. Like, what the fuck did we do, dude? <laughs> get him out. What did we do? Ain't the right takes. Jay knows what he did. Jay does know what he did. Yeah. Exile him. He's probably sitting there, by the way. He was probably the one shooting. Like, hey, you need more balls, time? Yeah. Cocaine! <laughs> you got anything else to... Cocaine! I will give the family credit, though. When you slept over at that house, you woke up in the morning and you had uh, the monkey balls oh, for no. breakfast. It was so good. Oh, I love that. The hell is that? It's like cinnamon and dough, just yeah. like all it's a cinnamon bun, but like, by the yeah, way, yeah. always super nice cars. That oh, family yeah. was really cool. I enjoyed that family. It's a good family. The dad's big dude.
Clem. He played in Miami. Center at Miami for Jim Kelly. Yeah, that's how that whole thing got tied together with the Bills. Are they in the yeah. business in Pittsburgh? Or? Nah. I don't think so. What? Diggs would know. I mean. Okay, yeah. Fair. Is he part of the Italian club over there? They paint houses? I don't think he is part of the Italian club, if I'm being honest. Oh, he is at the annual Italian shuffleboard tournament, though. So. Oh. <laughs> so he definitely has his fingies in a few things. So. But by the way, everything we're saying right now is true. Right? Like, Although we were delivering them in kind of funny. The Italian club in the town that we grew up in, Plum. Real fucking thing. Big deal. Yeah. Diggs' dad's the president. Yeah. I met we met some characters at Diggs' wedding too. Diggs's that they dad were in the, they were the president the, of the Italian yeah. club. What you guys, you guys they lost to Bocce last year, didn't they? What? Uh two years ago they lost to Penn Hills, which is the neighboring Italian. Oh, can't no. do it. Community. Can't do it. Oh, no. That was two years ago. But but last year they did. Coach, coach almost got voted out. Last no. year. What? Oh, yeah, and then Sweet he bounced. Last no, no. Year they did win. That see, that's what happened. Okay. Oh. Coach Diggs almost got voted out. There was a little bit of an uproar in the Italian club for losing to Penn Hills' Italian club. Oh, yeah. Okay, us Italians got to be better than those Italians at throwing a ball closer to another fucking ball, okay? Mm-hmm. Then Coach Diggs said, nah, nah, this year, more cigars, more card games, more other things. What? And we're going to come back and we're going to win the goddamn bocce tournament. And they did. That's what Coach Diggs does. Maybe they should think about hiring him to be the offense coordinator in fucking Pittsburgh. Hell oh, yeah. yeah. Two years ago, the, the Penn Hills Italian club brought in Aaron Donald to stand in the corner because that's where he is from. See? To intimidate. See? So. <laughs> And I didn't know that our Italian club could get intimidated, to be honest with you. I've <laughs> yeah. seen them operate a couple times. Yeah. But now that I know this, I maybe it is a very different world than we were just in 10 seconds ago. Mm-hmm. I did not know Coach Diggs and the boys over there getting intimidated. <laughs> Man. Did that happen? What's wrong with our Italian club? I Nick, mean, what's well, Aaron? They need some muscle. Do you have anything to talk about with the Italians of Plum here? He's basically from Penn. So. Oh, I am oh, right on the wow. border. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Whoa. What are you doing? You two sided pies on. Yeah. Everybody's turning on each other. Whoever's <laughs> winning. Whoever's <laughs> winning. <laughs> yeah. uh, I feel like we talk about Italians more than most shows. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Rightfully so, though. We love cannolis. Our town. <laughs> I guess we could just start rattling off the Italian food that sure. is better than everybody else's. Yeah. Chicken yeah. cannoli. And by the way, the town we grew up in, I would say every other person's Italian. I, like literally in the whole population, I think. Man, how did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. How? It was awesome, dude. Food was great. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was... By the way, apparently it's called monkey bread, not monkey yeah, balls. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, monkey balls are little apples that we used to throw, the little green ones. Oh, the are yeah, yeah, those are monkey balls. <laughs> Yeah, we used to invite Joe Hadley, come down the street, come hang out with Joe, and throw monkey balls. <laughs> <laughs> at Diggs' bachelor exactly. party, there was I thought a- it was very weird that the Barbarinos had those on their desk or on their table <laughs> in the mornings. I was very confused. What were you going to say, Fonzie? At Diggs' bachelor party, there was an argument about who was the most Italian. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. And it was no contest. We couldn't figure out who it was. Yeah, Coach yeah. Diggs. All smoking cigars. True. Coach Diggs, <laughs> by the way. Go get my uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Some things on the show, remember, are for us. Uh, yeah. Yeah. These last three minutes, if you, this is 100% for us. Mm-hmm. We apologize. I have a lot of respect for the Italian culture. Absolutely. But boy, I was drowning in it my entire childhood, basically. Man. Everywhere you go, these goddamn Italians. So sorry. It was awesome. Then you get dropped into Indiana? None. No, I haven't no seen Italians. one since I've Not a single Italian out here. Yeah. No. No restaurants with incredible food. Nope. Let's go to Buca de Beppo. That's what I'm talking about, though. Buca de Beppo is not bad. No, I'm not going to bury that. Pretty good. damn deli, maybe. <laughs> and also, what's the fast food one? Oh, oh, Fazoli's. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, Nick loves Fazoli's. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Love. I, well, I tolerate it. Yeah, you've learned to like it because you come out here to yeah. the No Italianville. Yeah, I think we can get. Yeah. <laughs> I found, what, an Italian restaurant downtown, and I sent you guys a picture of it. I'm like, hey, found one. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is a very good one. It's in I think actual Italians are running that place. Nice. You can tell, you know, because there seems to be, like, quick exits in places. Uh, Blacked sure. out Couple, windows. Oh, yeah. Back doors. doors yeah. Seems to be like, oh, there's other business happening within this business, isn't mm-hmm. there? Yeah. I could tell. All the tables face the front door. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Manager's got a feather in his hat. I will say an Italian restaurant really helped my life, though. That card game that got me into the kicking camp. That's right. Shout out to those Italians. Shout out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to that particular tribe of Italians. <laughs> Shout out. Really like that they let a 17-year-old in that game. I mean, I, I thought about that the other day whenever I was thinking about the Rich Rod interview. I was sitting at a table with like 55-year-olds, 6-year-olds in the basement of an Italian, just like classic basement of an Italian restaurant, just sitting there with 
as a 17 year old, if I'm one of those adults, what do you think you're just gonna take all of my money? Is that what you think? Exactly. Or, are you, or are you like, why is this guy here? We should not be allowing this kid to be here. And I assume they knew who I was too Probably. in the area. They knew what, what, why is McAfee here? He's a child. Let's take all his money and then I'm just fucking raking. Sorry, yeah. Jack Boyd. <laughs> are you one of those cigars over? <laughs> Should be thanking those guys for letting you escape with your life. Yeah, that's well, that's why I had to stick around, by the way. That's why I didn't get out of there until four fucking AM. Definitely the thought was, yeah, let's take all of his money. Yeah, you can't win and just leave. That's what I've learned about cash games over my days. <laughs> can't do it. You just gotta sit there and hold the fuck on. Yeah. Just yeah. hopefully not get annied to death. Uh -huh. oh, I don't got it. Hey, he says, get me the fuck out of here. I don't <laughs> get me the fuck out of here. I'll just take the Annie's pal. Fucking Italians, dude. Shout out to you guys. <laughs> let's get to a break. It's Thursday, on. January 14th, the Pat McAfee Show. Let's test out this Sharon! 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 Proper footy. Seems like it has a bigger sweet spot. That's the greatest sport on earth right there. Aussie rules football, also known as footy, AFL. My first time bombing in official shorts that are a little bit restricting. I think I lost a ball, to be honest. It might be a Lance Armstrong situation down here, but I can see why this sport is beloved because those balls fly. Need to get down to Australia, meet up with the Magpie boys, and finish out this AFL season as Maybe it's biggest fan in America. Let's have a day. There's a grown man with face paint on it. So you're big nut. I am, and you're, you're little nut. Well, I've had a few of those in my life. <laughs> oh, hey, I'll tell you what, big nut. I hope to find you one day on my wedding night. Big nut! You did a great job too. The lines are straight, no DUI problem there. You're really doing a great job here, sir. Hey, big nut, I love everything you're about, bud. Because we are gonna win the game! He just spit in my mouth while saying that. The most likely team to make the college football playoff is the team that is in Columbus. He said khakis are way too close to that team from up north. If you don't put black pants man. on right now, you're gonna get Should've booed out of Columbus. Yeah. So I want the black, <laughs> makes me look thin, and whenever I say two letters, the place goes crazy. Oh wait, yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, Eddie George. <laughs> that offense, though, led by Justin Fields, he has 41 touchdowns accounted for, only one turnover. I don't know how he is in the Heisman favor right now. Well, he certainly has a chance to make a stick at that today, certainly next week. He's supposed to be in Penn State, maybe not. And Mike McQuarrie told me I wasn't Penn State material. Okay, Herbie was your quarterback. He was a senior year yeah. freshman. What was he like as a teammate? Oh, he was great, man. Big, big shoulder pads. Uh, Kurt could run for days back in the day. Back in the day. She wants to flex on the gram. He says, lady, we are getting slaughtered by the Pittsburgh Penguins. No. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, do it, Tara. I thought I need to do this.
talk about Pat McAfee. One fight at a time, fellas. <laughs> the Pat McAfee show. That's right. <laughs> Spoil the shit out of your dog with Bark Box. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Two toys, two treats, and a mm. chew. It starts as low as $23 a month for $60 worth of dog chews Ooh. and toys. Wow. It's the best day of the month for our dogs. And when the Bark Box arrives, you see the tail wagging a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You see the nose sniffing a little bit higher. You see the smiles going from ear to ear. That's because they know that Santa Claus has arrived every single month for them without their parents having to remember at all to do anything. You're a hero for your dogs with Bark Box. Yeah. And if you join right now, you can get a free extra toy in every single box. That's $60 worth of toys for free. Sign up your pup and get unique toys and snacks, plus a free extra toy every single month. Tailored toys and tree, uh, treats ship for free every single month. That's not the, the shit. The shipping is free. The yes. shipping is free. Yeah. You're still paying 23 bucks a month. Right. For $60 worth of stuff. So $37 worth of free stuff coming, plus an extra toy every month with is $60 worth of stuff. Damn. That's all coming for 23 bucks. But the shipping, don't even pay for it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Forget right, about it. Right now, go to BarkBox.com forward slash Pat. That's B-A-R-K-B-O-X dot C-O-M mm -hmm. forward slash P-A-T. Okay. Forward slash is the one that looks like it's leaning forward like that Michael uh, Jackson dance. Uh, yeah. Ooh. yeah, backslash so is the one that looks like it's leaning backwards. By the way, fun little, fun little fact for you to keep going forward, by the way, because mm -hmm. we did struggle with that on numerous occasions because we have to send people to a lot of links and then we get forward slash backslash. People go, which one's which? Because the one will send you another place. It's the human leaning. That's how you should look at it. And this is America, so you read that left to right as opposed to right to left. That's right. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show. 33,000 people watching on YouTube. We appreciate the hell out of you. If you're listening on Sirius, you are the greatest. Have no idea who you are or where you are, but we just want to let you know we appreciate you. 1-888-MAD-DOG-6. We'd love to hear from you. Speaking of being heard from, Kyrie Irving was heard from by the general manager of the Nets saying he can't wait to get back and play for the Nets. This coming after reports that Kyrie's relationship with the Nets was much uglier than people could have imagined. Kyrie Irving has opted out of a couple games. He was seen on a Zoom call moments before one game tipped off. Now there's a bunch of rumors going around the internet that we are just simply relaying to you. The messages that we've seen on the internet being relayed to you, Kyrie Irving and the Nets aren't getting along. Kyrie Irving wasn't happy about about not being a part of the selection process of the head coach. Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant aren't as tight as people think. There's a lot of bullshit floating around with Kyrie Irving, especially because James Harden just got traded over there. Now James is going to shave the beard, probably get into the best shape he's ever been in. He gets to play alongside Kevin Durant, who he's friends with. But now the GM said, no, nah, don't worry, Kyrie's coming back. He can't wait to get here. If those three can figure out how to be on a team and Steve Nash in his first year as a head coach figures out how to deal with this, give the goddamn guy a Hall of Fame thing if he's a Hall, maybe the greatest coach of all time. Yeah. Phil Jackson, see you later. This guy got Kevin Durant, James Harden, Woo. Kyrie Irving all on the same page to win. They are obviously potentially explosive, but now nobody knows who's going to play, how they're going to play, and how mm. this whole thing is going to pan out. No clue. But they're probably going to end up going to the finals. Mm -hmm. You think Kyrie goes back to the Nets? No problem at all. Uh, yeah, I honestly do. James Harden had zero chance of going back to the Houston Rockets after the press conference where he said, we're not good over here, basically, mm -hmm. and it's not it's not feasible to be fixed. And then DeMarcus Cousins, who now will long, uh, play alongside John Wall and Victor Oladipo, Ooh. formerly of the Pacers, just about a year ago, he yelled that this was his city. Mm -hmm. Man. I know, Mo. He gets traded to Houston. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins said in a press conference, though, that uh, James Harden was disrespectful to our locker room long before this press conference. The way he handled offseason, the way he handled the way he showed up, what he looked like, things he was doing. DeMarcus Cousins and the Houston Rockets felt like they were at a point where they were also happy that James Harden was leaving, just like James Harden was happy he was leaving. He goes to the Nets. How you doing? Keep it moving. The NBA has drama news happening, and Diggs almost predicted it by getting trolled by a account that looks for people to fall for his troll tweets. <laughs> boy. Well, yeah, I mean, but like, did get it right, though. Kyrie Irving mm -hmm. Still did there. not get traded. Mm -hmm. uh, Victor Oladipo moves yeah. in uh, attempt to help out 
the Nets basically in return. You also didn't reference the 2029 or 2028 mm -hmm. pick mm -hmm. that was also traded for, oh, which, by the way, might be my favorite thing I've ever seen. When I was initially told of this information, because I do not follow the NBA as closely as I should when it comes to all these details, my timelines are mostly filled with football things. I was told that it was a 2039 first round pick. Yep. And whenever I was told that, I was fucking pumped. <laughs> if GMs are going to start trading, listen, uh, Deshaun Watson, yeah, what will you give us in return? How about this? 2042, first round pick. Okay, we'll both be fired. Who gives a fuck? Okay. We won't be around. Whole new teams. We'll deal with that later, but you can say you're still getting. And also, 2050, third round pick. Oh, They're wow. saying the players are only going to get better. A third round pick might be like a first round pick. And you're like, deal. We got. Uh, a first round pick, a third round pick. We got Tua and a couple picks this year. Let's go. Sir, that is in 2040 something. Yeah, but we don't fucking know who's Doesn't coming matter. out. Arch Manning might be. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Arch oh. Manning's kid might be coming out and playing that. <laughs> See, That's wild trading a, a pick eight years from now. It's awesome. Let's not get it. Let's not get it. But that is wild that that happened in the old thing. That's like when the uh, college, college programs schedule 10 years down the road for their home and aways for playing teams. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> and we have locked in a home and home in the years 2034 and 2035. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Will the college system still be operating by then? Ooh. Will there even be universities? Or will there just be trade schools that seem much more efficient and cost much less money? Huh. Will the university football NCAA survive until 2034, uh, 2035? We don't know. But if they do, fucking home and home. Yeah. Yep. We're That's playing. Right. It's going to be huge. That's crazy, man. Nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, they definitely did not foresee COVID coming along. No, they did not. They did not, which may but, end up by the being way, the death blow to the system. To the NBA or everything? Well, the NCAA. I well, mean. the NCAA, yeah, because they got the battle in the bubble or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the bubble, though, isn't really a bubble. It's an entire state. Well, yeah, and now they got the G <laughs> League. The bubble. It is, by the way, we're in the state. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. But we are in. I think we're in a tighter bubble than what the NCAA is going to be here. Yeah. We were talking about this earlier. Our show is based in Indianapolis, Indiana, but I mean, unless they're, I mean, Jay's a socialite, obviously. Sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Climbing the ladder. Socialite. He's, I mean, Jay does that. Yeah. But I'm only at home and at this office. That's the only places I go. I don't go anywhere else, really, ever. It's kind of sad now that I think about it. To get the food <laughs> delivered to the house. Yeah. I don't even go to the places I eat anymore. Nope. I am at home and I am at the office. That is a tighter bubble. I think the NCAA is playing on the entire state being used. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why. Well, you go to the Swiss Alps and play ping pong every single night. I mean, that's true, yeah. And I get in the goddamn ring. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you now. I do travel. Like all over the country. I guess the goddamn world. By the way, that um, the Ready Player One thing yeah. mm -hmm. with the treadmill. Treadmill, yeah. yeah. Very real thing, I guess, that does exist. Uh, I am getting yes. it for the house. Really? I feel like it's not going to be easy to use, though. Oh, it's going to be no. a pretty penny as well. I, I feel I like that. Yeah. What's that? I think it's going to be a pretty penny to get one of those things as well. You think so? Oh, I yeah. Think I, so. I, I would think assume. So. I actually think you have to invest in the treadmill company to even get one. No, I saw a picture of one. Yeah. It got sent to me uh -huh. with a link. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I think when you click on the link to the left of the treadmill, it says invest $1,000 into this company to get a free, get it, to yeah, get one. Yeah, to get one. 40% off or something. Are they running a fucking Kickstarter on yeah. this thing? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. But it's going to be fucking huge. Might be a good the time. The only thing that does think about that thing is it gives you a massive wedgie. Yeah, so it can turn a horse. You're in a horse. Question the stability and integrity of the thing. It's a kickback. Like, oh, I could see, like, maybe roll an ankle or mess your knee up on one of these things, but it oh, reassured us that it hoists you up. Oh. And it's like you're walking on air. Oh, okay. Yeah, light on your feet. He, uh, he right. did say that. He did yeah. say that. So it has, like, one of those crane things? Yeah. 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 Essentially. It's like being in a parachute. Yeah, it's a personal get back, coach. That's not good for me. The parachute thing is not good for I me. Know. The legs, because it does come up into the groin. Well, you're going to need to add some suspension to your ceiling, too, to make sure <laughs> that you can get awesome. that thing in. And yeah. yeah. True? Yeah. But, boy, it would be cool if I could walk around. Oh, change yeah. the game. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. yeah. Nick got one last night, and he was telling me about a bunch of games I didn't even know exist. Yeah, you've been pushing this Oculus. You didn't tell me once that Jurassic Park's got two games on the Oculus. Yeah, I got Whoa. car sick in that one. <laughs> I was like a roller coaster. Because you've been time. talking about using it for fitness, which didn't really appeal to me. <laughs> but, but if you had told me about Jurassic Park, that thing would have already been in my house. I told you about the squirrel suit. I mean, as soon as I got in, I got on a squirrel suit. I fucking flew through. There's a lot of those things. Yeah, oh, you can wow. walk through Jurassic Park, I'd assume. I, as soon as I got in there, I got sick. 
I couldn't do it. I had to get out of there. I got to take Dramamine when, when I play those games. That was real. The first one I walked around where there was an environment that moved, I got sick within like five minutes. Yeah, and you got to fucking take them off too. And then it, you get even worse almost with the real world. Oh, jeez. Like, yeah. so like, oh, wow. I so I don't fuck with those. Maybe I'm too soft. But you come over to ping pong world and the Oculus boxing world, I'm there. But I guess there's a rec room. Nick went into a rec room last night, poured himself a drink. There's oh. other ways. There's other people oh. hanging out in there. That's cool. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. He said he could go play some ping pong against people in his rec room. It's just like a hangout. It's Ready Player One over there. Yeah, that is the one that made me sick, too. So I watched oh, it in there. Okay. Oh. Wow. Too I much booze. <laughs> too, <laughs> <Jameson. laughs> too much Jameson. Drinking too much, dude. Probably is the case. Can't be drinking that much in the Oculus. As he was housing that Jameson, the Oculus is like, all right. I mean, this is the most. <laughs> this guy slammed. <laughs> <laughs> Got your fucking AI guy hammered, drunk. Let's go to Bobby in New York. What's going on, Bobby? Pat, you there? Yeah, what's going on, Paul? Pat, my man. Uh, Pat and the boys, just wanted to say a quick hello. Uh, I was looking at the Twitter poll. It doesn't really seem like many oh. people are giving uh, the Rams a chance here at Green Bay this weekend. Uh, uh, minus six and a half, big holes in the O-line. Uh, you know, Bakhtiari out, Valdez out on the COVID list. Uh, Donald's going to come crashing through there like a Mack truck. And uh, with Ramsey taking uh, Rodgers' number one target out in Adams. Okay. Uh, I saw Rodgers' completion rated, rating goes down to about 45% when he's pressured. I don't know. I don't think people are giving that enough thought. Um, could be a dogfight. Where do you see that going? All right, Bobby, thanks for that. Mm-hmm. Who's your quarterback, dude? Yeah, but he's saying it doesn't matter. Last week their quarterback didn't do a goddamn thing. Yeah, well, the Seahawks stink. Well, the Seahawks do stink. Ramsey's good, but Devontae and DK Metcalf are two different tiers. What about Devontae's big a whole Bob different Tunyon. animal. I agree. Listen, I'm not going to say anything about Jalen because watching the way he plays football, That's it great. is incredible to watch, just like Devontae is as well. So yeah, yeah, let's, ju- let's just go ahead and even if – let's just wipe that one out. All right. Okay. I don't know if Aaron's wiping that off or not in his mind. I would assume they are actually probably going to early. You'll yes. probably see some to see mm-hmm. what we got. But then you gotta you got to remember – Oh, Big Bob Tunyon, he just wrote an entire article in The Athletic mm-hmm. to Green Bay. Yeah. I mean, Big Bob Tunyon has 12 touchdowns or something this year. Mm-hmm. 10 touchdowns, 11 touchdowns. Lazard. Then they got three backs that are very good. The offensive line is a question because Old Valdir did get traded uh, or not picked up from the Colts less than two days after starting for the Colts or playing for the Colts in a playoff game. It was going to be like the first time that he got COVID somehow in transaction over Ooh, there from – the Colts game, which, by the way, I think what potentially happened was um, immediately after the Colts lost to the Bills up there, you know, he's in that locker room. The locker room pretended, opened some doors to people like, hey, let's have a good time in here. We haven't been able to do this. Our game's over anyways. We want to. And then he potentially on a plane back gets the whole thing. But anyways, offensive line is a question, but Aaron knows that too. So you just got to assume that Aaron and LeFleur uh, know what the hell they're doing. But I, it, it is going to be a game, I think. I, I tend to believe that Lambeau is going to be tough uh, for anybody let alone Goff, who has had problems in the cold, and now he can't even close his hand. I just think I just think this is a game that the Packers should win pretty easily. But, Bobby, I like your points over there in New York. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to blow him out, but I think it's safe. I mean, I'm, I'm confident that the Packers are going to win this weekend. You know, it just – So, you got that mustache, dude? Yeah, absolutely. I just felt it was time. Let's go to Spam in Kentucky. What's going on, Ham? Hey, Pat. How's it going? Your name's Spam? Uh, no, it's Sam. Jesus, Mitt. How does this happen? I mean, he's a freaking dope head. How do you believe yeah, me? Silent hey, oh, here you go. See the screen. But look at this th- kid's fucking lying. No, oh, this oh. kid's lying. Oh. oh, this kid. I had this kid spell his name. I said his name twice. What'd you say? Spam? Yeah, I said spam. I was, <laughs> spam? Yeah. How do you not correct me? Spam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, now we're pointing fingers at other people. Anyway, spam. What do you want to talk about, dude? Uh. I was planning on talking about uh, Bill O'Brien. And uh, do you think Bill O'Brien will have uh, any luck getting back into the NFL after his gig in Alabama? Or do you think he'll want to stay there at at the collegiate level? That's very interesting. How how long is he getting paid by um, Houston? Do we know? Mm -hmm. They probably owe him money for a little bit. You go down to Alabama, you take a – you go take a, a little rehab course with uh, coaching with Nick Saban, have some success with absolute superstars, decide what you want to do. Hang out, keep it going, maybe be a head coach of college. Ooh. I assume that. you got to remember, Bill O'Brien comes from Penn State for a long time. Yeah, now, he yeah. went up to New England, but he's at Penn State for a long time. I assume he's weighing his options, but he's going to have to have success next year for any of that to happen. Will he? I assume so. Uh, about 40 seconds uh, left. Nick has something to say. Uh, breaking news, Tim Tebow is now a New York Times bestseller published author. <laughs> With his kids' book. Timmy! Attaboy, Timmy.
Oh, wow. you're clapping. Yeah. Again, I love Tim Tebow. He's a great author. He's great on TV. He's great at everything he does. He also fucking stinks at baseball. <laughs> 15 <laughs> seconds left here in hour two. We got Darius Slay joining us on the other side. Can't wait to chat with him. Philadelphia Eagles corner. Also, AJ Hawk with some maybe news. Whoa. Oh, it's Pat McAfee Show Thursday, January 14th. We'll see you then. I was told by Del Curry, Scotty Pippen struggles on a golf course, right? Right. I was told at that thing that I'm going against Scotty Pippen the next day, match play, heads up, one-on-one Scotty Pippen. So we decide, like, okay, we'll probably have a couple drinks, stay at the casino a little <laughs> bit longer than we should. Representing the NFL out of the shoeless golf club of America, Pat McAfee. His opponent representing the NBA, Scotty Pippen. You know what I mean? This guy's got six rings. Yeah. He's a fucking Hall of Famer. <laughs> but today he's going to play against me. And then I start seeing Scotty hit some shots that are just like starting to come together. And I'm like, wait a fucking minute. I think I was lied to. <laughs> we were lied to yesterday. We were told Scotty Pippen was a terrible golfer. Probably Scotty fucking Pippen. Going in the back nine, I think I was down one. Like we were really, like we were battling. But I started making putts. And Scotty Pippen went ahead and got real hot. I mean, <laughs> real fucking hot. On. I was down three with seven left, and I looked right in the camera, and I go, You're down three with like seven holes left. Scotty Pippen's about to get this work. Scotty Pippen from 190 yards out just fucking dunks it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking boom, bang, and then walks up to the green, gets the ball, cameras on him, and he goes, Pippen ain't easy. <laughs> 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 Down four with six left after Scotty Pippen just chips him from fucking 400 yards out. <laughs> I, I was fucking demoralized. Uh, Pippen yeah. ain't easy. Is it? By the way, best he's ever performed at golf because I'm around. Better teammate than Jordan. Yep. People forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I told Dell. Oh, yeah. I was like, Dell, what the fuck are you lying to me? He was like, well, I saw it yesterday. He was not great. And Greg Anthony told me, and I was like, Dell, he. Buried me, Del Curry. <laughs> he buried me. He was like, hey, Pippen ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, baby, it's time to celebrate. Talking about a shotgun of beer after he had beat me, obviously. I, I like teach him how to do it. Yeah, put a hole in there. It might spray a little bit, so. Yeah, yeah, so you're going to go here, and then you're going to open and flip up. Does that make sense? Congrats on winning the NBA a couple of times. Blah, 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 blah. And being an incredible golfer. Right, well, Cheers, man. Say. Hey, 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 hey. Damn. Okay, That's Scotty. the best Bud Light I ever had. <laughs> hey, there's no stock in the three years anyway. You're right. First things first, 50 yards, trash can drop into the bucket accuracy contest. Apple, apple, psycho. How easy it is to catch now with the boys. Oh! 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 Time to play down the road. Oh! 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 Alright, so you can throw the shit out of it and catch it. I think the XFL ball gets a big pass. By the way, I hit some bombs with it as well.
check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Sound right, boys. The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back. Hour three here on this Thursday, January 14th, 2021. We're being joined now by a guy what? who is potentially going to be coaching it. Oh. <laughs> Hour three kicks off with Mr. A.J. Hawk. Wow. Oh, oh, AJ Hawk. Coach Hawk. Coach Urban Coach Meyer. Hawk. Urban Meyer gets a job done in Jacksonville. His first call is to his favorite Buckeye hero, A.J. Hawk, and he says, come coach linebackers, come do something with our staff because it is being reported that Urban Meyer would like to surround himself with people who know a lot about the NFL. I don't know anybody that knows more than A.J. Hawk. Will you be working for the Jacksonville Jaguars, A.J. Hawk? Uh, I don't know, but I, I think if I if he brings me in, I'm, I'm looking to be the assistant head coach slash D coordinator because I have so much extensive, I have such a big resume of a coaching career that I think I should get that job right away. Oh, so yeah. you're like the classic college kids nowadays who come out of college and they just learn from somebody who couldn't accomplish what they're teaching, so that's why they're teaching, and they feel like they deserve to be the president of the fucking company as soon as they get it. That's what you're doing right now? I guess so, yes. <laughs> Congrats, dude. Dude, dude yeah. almost Let's coach. Go. Do you want to break? Do you want to break any news? I, I wish I had any news no, for you. I know uh, you're trying come to say, on. Don't you're you're alluding like, to know, the fact that you off, had news. Just say it. Hey, Urban doesn't even have the job yet, does he? Oh, yeah, he does. Okay. He does have the job. He does have the job. Have the job. Don't Fish play this yet. game. What am I going to break? You, you're sitting there trying to say, oh, what did you say? I saw the clip. Oh, a Buckeye hero might get a job down there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The only one that is coached, obviously. It's myself, Bobby Carpenter, and Schlegel. You're talking about the uh, there that thing, the cereal box. But yeah, yeah. Schlegel's actually worked with Urban. He was the strength coach on oh. the staff and everything. Oh. 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 oh, I would hire Schlegel if I was a head coach in the NFL. I would want to bring him in. I have no idea what Urban's going to do, but I would do it. At what position? I would make him the, the head strength coach. So okay, huh. let's. Let's say you put on your Urban Meyer cap mm -hmm. and you're Urban Meyer. Yeah. You said if you were Urban Meyer, you would hire Schlegs as the head strength coach for the Jacksonville Jaguars? Of course, yeah. You think Urban Meyer makes good decisions? He makes good decisions for sure. I have no idea what he's thinking about with any staff hirings, though. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So no breaking news? No, sorry. Huh. This thing. If Schlegs doesn't get the job and he's got time on his hands, you think he'd write us up a plan? Yeah, can he get us in shape? Maybe he becomes our strength and conditioning yeah. coach. Is that possible? He would be amazing at that. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. okay. So Perfect. congrats to Schlegs. He will have numerous job offers, it sounds like. <laughs> Joining us now is a three-time Pro Bowler, a man who just got uh, broken off. Uh, a little bit ago. He was traded for a third rounder and a fifth rounder out of Detroit. Get him the fuck out of here. Okay? <laughs> he uh, seems to be good at football. Ladies and gentlemen, corner for the Philadelphia Eagles, Darius Slay. Yeah. 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 What's up? What's up? Hey, thanks for joining us, man. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? Hey, not too shabby. Uh, let's dive right into it. I saw something on Sports Center yesterday where you went to uh, a kid's graduation party. You're like super duper 
incredible dude. I had no idea until I saw that whole thing. How did that whole thing happen? Are you normally very interactive with the fans? How have you enjoyed Philadelphia? Let's go ahead and keep it moving here. Yeah, man. Um, you know, kids be um, in Boston, me and um, back in Detroit, I used to go to a lot of high school games and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I just used to tweet out what games I want to go to or what games good to go to. And, um, and I just pull up. And um, and the kid had asked me to come to his graduation. And uh, so I had did it, you know, surprised him. I ain't even answered to it. I just had uh, just jumped up there and surprised him. And you guys, it looked like I haven't been to a graduation party in a while. <laughs> you guys were playing like uh, beer pong, but with water. How's your game? Did you lose? Did you win? I think you had one cup in front of you. What the hell was going on? Mm. Man, I'm lost, man, because I don't drink, so uh, I'm not good at them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk. But by the way, that's awesome that you did that and do that. Great for the community. It's always good to see NFL players kind of get invested in the cities that they're playing for. I assume whenever you found out you were going to be traded, that was a little bit of alarming. Did you know that was potentially going to happen? Did it come out of nowhere whenever you got traded for a third and a fifth? Uh, no, no, we kind of knew it was going to happen. You know, uh, you know, uh, me and um, – Matt Patricia made a little, you know, we talked talk for a while and, you know, we couldn't get it to where we needed to get it at. So uh, we knew it was going to happen. So you said you talked to Matt Patricia, who was the head coach of the Lions at the yeah. time. It, you talked to him directly? You go through agents? Like, how does that work? Uh, we had, uh, you know, we was talking during the season and um, and directly. So, uh, you know, we was, we was uh, grown enough to talk to each other. And, you know, me, him, and Bob, and, you know, we couldn't come up with something. And um, so we uh, – that did what's best for, uh, for for myself. Okay, so whenever you find out you're going to Philadelphia, uh, were you happy about that, thrilled about that? Obviously, just a few years ago, Super Bowl champs. Whenever you find yeah. out you're going to Philly, you were excited, I assume, to get out there? Of course. You know, uh, of course I was excited. You know, uh, new start, new beginning. Um, you know, I know a lot of guys that was on the team already. So uh, it's a new fresh start for me, and I was ready for it. Well, the thing we enjoyed about it is um, we learned about you whenever you got traded. And, and – that's no offense to you, okay? Most offense to the Detroit Lions mm -hmm. and their fans, yep. okay? Fair. Detroit Lions, yep. you know, not a lot of conversations happening about the Lions over the last mm -hmm. 30, 40, 50 years. <laughs> just about. And yeah. the issue is because they made Calvin Johnson pay the money back oh. and Barry Sanders pay the money back. Ooh. It is a curse, okay, that is a lot deeper than anybody could fathom. So whenever we see you get traded for, you know, for a bag of balls, basically, Philadelphia, and then it, the, the ratings come out, you know, that he's like, oh, this is like best corner in the league. Yep. And then contract track comes it's like it was awesome for us just to bury the lions fan that we have in here that that was happening but when you go to philadelphia uh was there any big environment change were you asked to become a leader in there and meet like what was the transition into the philadelphia eagles organization like i went it wasn't much that much like a difference you know um you know i just came in there played my role as a person you know um i was new there so i was trying to fill everybody out you know, and um, I was the leader. In, well, I was one of the leader in my DB room, so I, that's my thing about me is uh, I try to lead the DBs in the right direction. Uh, but as a team leader, you know, I was working to that, um, just trying to figure everybody out. Uh, Carson, Fletcher, uh, Kels, you know, all them guys, Ertz, them guys are doing a great job at what they was already doing, you know, so I just try to fill in and try to help out. Darius, whenever you, you know, see what's happening to a team that you're on, I was on a team that went 2-14, and 14, and we went 0-13. Oh we won two out of the last three. We kind of almost lost Andrew Luck while winning <laughs> those games. But it was just – it was a very – it was an interesting time because you, you start hearing people, like, talk – off in the locker room about what's going on. Coaches start thinking they're going to get fired, so they start turning whenever things start going bad. Whenever the world seemed to think that the Eagles organization was burning from within this year, what was it like in there? Were you guys trying to keep the noise out? Because the amount of noise about the team that you were a part of was deafening outside of it. I mean, it was very, right. very loud. What was it like in there? Did you guys try to avoid the noise, or did it creep in? You guys had to address the whole thing. Um, I mean, we try to avoid it. You know, like I said, we had great guys on the team that were great leaders. That's, uh, you know, just kept focused on football. We was all worried about the week. So uh, we had a little thing that just when we got a time and uh, focus on the game, you know, uh, we know this is a business. You know, it can happen in this business. Anything can possibly happen. So uh, we're just trying to look, look forward and win games. You know, and that's the most important thing is about winning games. So we felt as if we, if we win games, the noise would stop. So uh, that, was our, that was our goal. Darius, what's your what was your your coordinator Jim Schwartz there in Philly, and I assume you were there in, in Detroit with him as well. Uh, your previous relationship yep. with him, what's he seems like one of those 
like genius maniacs <laughs> on the defensive side of the ball. Is that like it, what's he like? Oh man, he's awesome, man. He's a he's a great guy, man. It's great energy, and he holds you to a high standard, man. That's what I love about him. Um, and he go keep you there, you know, no matter what type of player you is, how many Pro Bowls you got, where you been, where you come from, how much money you got. Uh, he holds you to a high standard, and um, he expects you to do your job at a high level. And um, I appreciate him the most, you know, because he drafted me and um, and showed me the game and taught me to be a pro early. Were you there when he almost fought? Who did he almost fight? Harbaugh. Harbaugh. Were you there when he almost? Harbaugh. <laughs> Were you there for that? Uh, no, no, that was the year right before me. Oh, man, <laughs> that was electric. Yeah, I wouldn't dude. see it. <laughs> yeah, that, that was awesome. Anytime you have a little coach's beef, it always, uh, the boys buzz in the locker room. About it. It's like, hey, our guy's about to fucking, about to go for this thing. Um, I hear a dog. What type of dog do you have? Oh, uh, I got cane corsos and, uh, and uh, blue pit. Those are Ooh. the, the, cor- the, the king, those are massive dogs, right? Oh, yeah, they big. But mine's still a pup right now, so, uh. I'm worried to see how big it get. What are the names? We got any cool names over there? Yeah, I got a uh, Deuce and Kobe. Oh, Ooh, so what are your dog names there? What do you got, Tiggs? Darius, how much did it help you early in your career that you come in and you immediately are going up against Calvin Johnson every day in practice? Uh, it was good, man. Um, shoot, my rookie year, um, I ain't knock a ball down from him. <laughs> 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 he was destroying me every day, like uh, so he made my confidence more high than what it was already. So. Uh, just because of the fact that uh, it was hard to already stop him, but getting caught on every day in practice was uh, pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> he just bombed on you. At least you, every single day, you lined up against him, though. That had, That's something. That's a big deal because not everybody does that. I would assume that right. that only made you better through the whole process. And also, corners, how do you – okay, yeah. So when you do get bombed on, everybody talks about you got to have short memory, short memory. How? Right. How do you guys just forget about that and just go back out there? You have to have that confidence. The confidence is the way you carry through the whole thing? You got to have the confidence, man. Um, you know, some people built in it. Uh, but, uh, like, I was built for it, you know. So, uh, but it just, it's just rough out there. You know, you're going to have one of them days, man, <laughs> trying to figure out somebody where they're trying to go at and trying to stop them. And you got to guess for most of the part of the time. You know, plays like that going to happen. But, uh, you know, you, uh, you got to keep fighting and keep playing. Sorry about the nameless gray face. That's Jeez. blurry face that is on the side of the screen over there. His internet is absolutely despicable. <laughs> it is maybe the most disgusting internet of all time. That's, that's a joke. That guy over there, that's AJ Hawk, by the way. The, uh, I mean, abs- if Darius, if a guy like me or AJ gets a catch on you, is that when you retire? You think? Is that retirement time? Oh, no, I ain't going to get no catch on me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not coming out. <laughs> um, Coach Doug Peterson was fired. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole world knew that. Were you guys sent an email? Were you guys, <laughs> did anybody, like, how did you find out about it? Was it just through social, like everything else basically is? And has there been any further conversation? Because you're one of their staples. Have you heard anything from the organization since the firing? Uh, I mean, not firing, uh, sorry. Always... Separation. The se- yeah. mutual the parting, of the parting of ways. I'm so sorry. The parting of ways. So sorry about that. Yeah, uh, you know, they sent out a letter, you know, I was surprised, you know, but uh shoot, um definitely out the guy that had all the um, you know, one of my first Super Bowl. So a lot of guys are surprised, but uh, you know, I thought at least had a year left. But uh, you know, how the business is, I don't know how it happened, nor what happened. Maybe some type of under you no know, agreements or something they wanted to do different. I don't know. But, uh, you know, all right, best of luck to him wherever he end up at. I know he's going to be a good coach wherever he goes at. And um, I'm looking forward to see what he becomes. I think that's such an interesting thing because a lot of people think if you're on the team, you know a lot more. And then yeah, you don't know nothing. nothing. <laughs> there, I think it was my I think it was my rookie year where I was at practice and then I came home. And then I opened Twitter and I learned something about my teammate that happened at the same practice that I was at from Adam Schefter. I'm like, how how did I not know that? I was literally standing there and this right. son bitch does. And it's like, I think you were talking about the Troy Aikman conversation this morning about uh, Troy Aikman said on Michael Irving's podcast that he talked to Doug Peterson because they're friends and everything like that. And he said there was a difference of an idea between Jalen Hurts and Carson Wentz on who should be the franchise's quarterback. And I am not ever going to put a player in a position to have to answer a question that will potentially jeopardize any conversation you could have in the locker room going forward. So I would not do that to you. But the question I do have is, did you guys realize what was going on 
in the locker room while it was happening. You know, like when Jalen gets put in for the first time as a starter, Carson gets down. And how did you guys keep that not awkward? Like, or like, or did the defense just say like, hey, we got to take – because defense, offense, two different teams within an organization. Right. Did you guys just kind of – were you guys on your own side or did you guys get involved? Like how did that whole thing unfold behind closed doors? Um, really, man, we just on a, we focus on the defensive part because, uh, you know, we just try to get the ball back for the offense so the offense can put up more points. And, uh, you know, we as a defense, I don't think we knew that even Jalen was going to start until he brought it out into the media. So uh, we were just like, hey, whoever ups, we up. And we just trying to do our best to help the team win. So uh, it wasn't like like a whole team meeting of who going to be starting or not. So it was just more like, hey, whoever's out there, you go try to get them the best foot for and um, try to get them the ball most we can. I guess – yeah, go ahead, AJ. I'm just wondering about this – the current playoff picture and what's going on. Are you going to be watching – and like, do you think there's going to be any upsets? Like, how do you think a team like the Browns is going to do? I, I think they're going to do good, man. You know, guys like – them guys, them two running backs they got, man, they running the ball. And uh, and when you can run the ball and control the clock, it's tough. But uh, a team like Kansas City, though, that could put up 30 points in, like, 10 minutes. And um, so, <laughs> you ain't going to have too much time to run the ball. So, I, I feel like if uh, Cleveland defense do – Slow, uh, slow that guy down a little bit. Um, they'll be good. Being in the NFC, there's a lot of great wide receivers, right? And Devontae's name just kind of got brought into the conversation this year for whatever reason as being one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. What makes one of those elite guys those elite guys? Is it just ball skill? What makes it whenever you're going against a guy like that? Do you know, like, okay, this is potentially going to be a long fucking day here? Oh, yeah, man. With anything with – uh. Like me, going, I've been playing against Devontae for a long time, seven years. So, um, like I said, right now he for sure is the best receiver in the league. And, um, you know, with, with Aaron throwing him the ball, you know, it's making it even tougher. So, uh, What you know, is it, though? What, what does he do? What does he do that's different oh, than – I mean, he, he, he could just do it all, man. He could do it all. He could really – you know, he's not the one of the fastest guys, you know, but as on film, he look fast, you know, so uh, – Good release guy, man. Like I said, he's one of the best releasers in the league. So we got him and him, Keenan Allen, Amari Cooper are like the best three I've seen release off the ball. But nobody does it better than uh Devontae. And um Devontae a dog, man. He got a he got a dog mentality. Um, big boy, you know, taking contact, like like contact. So man, I'm I'm dang sure looking forward to him and Jalen Ramsey going against each other this week. You talk shit? Uh no, man. I'm I'm a humble guy, man. You know, I, I appreciate everybody's work, you know. So but uh don't talk to me, and I won't talk to you. <laughs> I ain't a killer, but <laughs> do don't not push me. <laughs> do you got something? To do? No, I was gonna ask about Jalen and Devonte. Yeah, it's just a very interesting. It's a Jalen and Devonte. Oh, Ramsey. The, mm-hmm. the, oh, Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, got it. Okay, I thought you were talking hurts. I'm like, oh, no. whoa, a lot of Jalen's on. Oh. So, so we get yeah. it. Uh, Darius, who's a who's a QB that you just don't like going against? Who who gives you trouble? I mean, Aaron. That's one who gives me a lot of trouble, man. Like I said, I've been seeing him for since I've been in the league. And, man, he's just a smart dude, man. I, like I said, he's the MVP of the league this year for sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, we agree. And, man, like I said, man, he made throws that's, that that I don't know. It's, it's hard to even explain. So, but like I said, um, he's one of the toughest guys I went against. And he gonna be, and he's steady, consistent, and um, smart, read coverage as well, and, and very cocky. <laughs> is there a confident he'll say the um and we'll say i think very confident man but oh, yeah. i mean he is so calm out there isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They zoom in on, calm. he un he undoes that fucking thing straps it up there has a quick little conversation a smile and he walks back into the hut i mean it is he's just on a different planet he, out there yeah man one time we was playing him this year man he just walked up to us casually and just picked up a piece of grass and just like Threw it, like threw it in, um, threw it in the wind. We're like, what is he doing? You know what I'm saying? They just, you know, <laughs> it's just that he does stuff like that. You're like, man, this dude is so good, man. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, we appreciate you so much for joining us, man. Have an incredible off season. Hope you enjoy Deuce and Kobe a little bit. Hope that puppy grows up to be, you know, ten foot dog. You know, <laughs> that'll, be good. that'll be good news for you. Where do you spend the off season? Uh, man, I'm right now. I'm in New Jersey right now, waiting on my house to be finished. So. Uh, until that's done, uh, I'm going to be right here in Jersey. Oh, wait, you're building a house. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, right. Appreciate it. Are you an architect? Did you design that thing? Oh, uh, no. I ain't doing all that now. I got somebody to <laughs> do the job. <laughs> Florida? Where at? Uh, not in Houston, Texas. Oh, hey, there's a lot going on. Are you a Rockets fan? Um, Not now. <laughs> 
<laughs> going to the Nets? Or are you going to the- I'm going to the Nets. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Darius Slay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was awesome. He was really awesome. We didn't get to the accountant question. Oh, oh shit. No. Which will be disappointing for some people, mm-hmm. but yeah. I enjoyed that convo. AJ, <laughs> did you know anything about him? I didn't know much about him before the trade happened, and then you kind of learned thus, be just strictly because we make fun of Foxy for the trade happening. Mm-hmm. He's a ball ho- he's a player, huh? Oh yeah, he can play. And yeah, he didn't really get the recognition he deserved until he got traded, I feel like. When people are like, wait, what are the and it, it people recognize it strictly so they could kill the Lions. Like, what are you yeah. doing? Why would you get rid of this guy? Yeah, it's about to happen to Stafford, too. The exact same s- situation. You think Stafford's out of town? They just hired a GM. I yeah. don't think he's out of town, but if he does go out of town, everyone's be like, and sees him in a new uniform and he's good, they're going to be like, wow, this guy's awesome. Hey, let's do some assuming real quick. Let's do some assuming. Jo- uh, Lions just hired a director of college scouting from the Rams to their general manager position. Do I know the guy's name? Absolutely not. Neither do you. Doesn't matter until we see how his team does. But when you think about the Rams, you don't think like, oh, uh, uh, college scouting is their thing because I guess they drafted Aaron Donald and got the boys in there. I guess it could get get going there. But if you're a director of college scouting, you would think they potentially – want to maybe a younger squad maybe build through the draft right. and are you going to sh- are you going to ship Stafford out of town you think they ship Stafford out of town I hope they do bring him to Indy somebody Ooh. somebody did some edits of him in a Colts uniform he looks good oh, in yeah. a Colts uniform I hope that happens would you if you were up there absolutely if I was any team that is you know fighting to get into the playoffs every year or, like can you imagine Stafford on a good team oh, like with a I have. defense and, and weapons around him the Colts dude if he comes to the Colts Ooh. It would be awesome. Got to get him some weapons, I guess. But if you get Matt Stafford, I assume you could sign weapons easier as well. Phil Rivers, Chris Ballard, the general manager for the Colts, had his press conference today. He went for a while. And Chris Ballard, by the way, he is one of the most transparent GMs, I think, that we've ever seen maybe in the league. He yeah. is. He, he will talk. Like, he'll sit up there. He's not scared of any question. He's very confident in all the decisions he made and will make in the future. I don't think he lies much. He talked about Phil Rivers. He was asked about Phil Rivers, and he said, you know, Phil will go back and think about it for some time. We'll think about it for some time. Kind of gave himself a little both an out if he needed it in the future without, like, hammering home, like, oh, I love Phil. He's coming back or whatever. It just seems like there's a chance there's a new quarterback coming in. Then he was asked if he'll draft a quarterback, and his actual answer was, was if I draft one, it'll get you guys off of my ass, okay? But if it doesn't work out, I'll be the first one out the door. Too. <laughs> yeah. Like it was like a, it was a very so I think the Colts quarterback position is one that will be a storyline this offseason. And if they do get Matty Stafford, I will be fired up about it. I don't think Carson Wentz is on the trading block anymore if what Troy Aikman said on the Michael Irving podcast is accurate and that Jeff Lurie wanted Carson Wentz to be the guy. Doug Peterson wanted to go to Jalen strictly because of the contract. So I Jesus, there's a lot of shit going on. I had just a tough pill to swallow. All, <laughs> yeah. all that stuff. Well, so if that, okay, let's say that Carson is the guy, whoever they bring in to be the next head coach has to be on board with Carson being the guy. And whoever you bring in to interview, that's going to be one of your first questions. Like, how are you, hey, like Carson, you would imagine, you would think the owner is in there saying, hey, Carson's our guy. Are you going to be able to win with him? Yeah, and a lot of people have told us that they would go in there with two ideas, basically. If you're, do you want to keep Carson? Here's how I would do it. If you don't, this is how I would do it. I guess that's kind of how it goes. But it's very interesting because now that Jalen Hurts is there, what do you got to do? You got to trade Jalen then? Because like, Jalen probably has, is worth something yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, and if you trade him, that gets rid of the Carson Wentz mental potential hurdle that he couldn't get over this year. It's very interesting watching all this shit play out. What's up, Dix? Does that, does that make that job unattractive because you're already coming in and already be told, being told which quarterback you have to start? Interesting you say that because I think the narrative around Doug Peterson's hiring with the Eagles was when he was hired, he was young, and they could tell him what to do. And then it got to the point now where he's like, kind of not about it about it so it's like do you want a head coaching job to have a head coaching job and lead your group but you're not going to be able to make every decision that other head coaches can make just because you're young maybe this is a first opportunity to get a head coaching gig that's kind of i would assume who you look like they interviewed joe brady didn't they i think they interviewed joe brady they've entered i don't know i think they did kellen moore i think no i think they they did request they did request kellen moore but they also i think joe brady is interviewed with everybody at this point i believe was the tweet that i read the young offensive coordinator for the carolina panthers i'll be intrigued uh uh eric b he's potentially not going to get hired in a lot of offensive 
uh, minded owners, I would assume. He's going to, who's the, uh, uh, Kafka? Yeah, Mike Kafka. Hold on, we have the graphic. Don't we have mm-hmm. the graphic for who's mm-hmm. potentially going to be the Philadelphia Eagles head coach? Because that is a situation you're walking into where, holy shit, we got to settle a lot of problems here. Okay, there's there's deep issues. Just like the Houston, Texas. We don't have the, the FanDuel graphic. I thought we had it. Gumpy will get it. The odds are on, um, the odds on favorite is Bob Salah. Mm -hmm. He's at like plus 300, plus 240 or something like that. Kafka, who's the director of passing offense or something like that, or coordinator of passing offense for the Chiefs, he's on there at pretty good odds. If he gets hired over Biennemi, that'll be interesting to see how that whole thing plays out. There's some other, Byron Leftwich is on the list. There's a couple other. They, they allegedly want to make a splash hire. Who knows how that goes. Would you want that gig over Houston's? Man, either one is tough when you think about it. Yeah. I guess you'd have to interview both and see like what their plan is. Like, are they are they going to jam Carson in? You say, hey, Carson's our guy, no matter what. You got to make it work. And same thing. And if I'm in Houston, I'm like, well, what's the roster look like next year? Who's my quarterback when you're when you're interviewing for that gig? Well, and also, Deshaun was at a Rockets game, James Harden's last Rocket Rockets game against the L.A. Lakers, sitting courtside alongside a man. That I didn't know who it was, but then we saw pictures in suites or something like that. He was with Andre Johnson, mm-hmm. and that was after Andre Johnson put out the tweet or before? After. After? That was after he put out the tweet? Yeah. So I wonder if Andre Johnson, um, I wonder how that whole thing works out. But that's only a situation that's only getting uglier. And if you're the coach, you have to deal with that, by the way. Like that is The coach directly has to deal with that, okay? If the player hates the GM, now granted, or not GM, the owner. The GM has to deal with that, obviously, when I'm over. But the coach has to deal with that on a day-to-day basis with players that are getting brought in and cut and everything like that. You have to deal with that, especially if it's a quarterback. It's hard to mend fractured relationships like that, especially if it's gotten that deep with that much support and that loud. But uh, either job is going to be very difficult. Do we have the graphic? Here's the graphic here for the Eagles' next head coach. Bob Salaz at plus two hunch. Way to go, Bob. Boy, Bob. He went to the Jets a couple times as well. The Lions, no way they land him, even though he grew up in uh, Detroit. Will he be a good head coach? Everybody says yes. Calm, cool during the week. Game days flips the switch. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and have a good time out here. Deuce Staley, running back coach, I do believe, for the Eagles currently, plus 700. Brandon Staley, don't know who that is. Jim Caldwell, legend, he's in there. But Mike Kafka at plus 450, the second favorite to win the Eagles or earn the Eagles head coaching gig, followed by Kellen Moore, Brian Dayball, Eric Bieniemy. Very, very interesting there. Lincoln Riley's on the list. These are all odds, so they've done the research on who they think is potentially going to get hired. How about this one? Nick Saban plus five thousand. <laughs> Anthony Lynn getting another head coaching gig. Pe- Hamilton, the DC Defenders head coach. Yep, he's potentially getting a gig. Graham Harrell. Graham Harrell, your guy, AJ. Which one? Who? The, oh, this is a very interesting pool because who wants to take that job knowing that allegedly they're not going to have a lot of power and a lot of the decisions being made, but you are a head coach in the NFL. Who do you think here, AJ? Well, if you're not going to have the power that you you would want if you want to be a head coach, I would think like Mike Kafka or Kellen Moore, like a young guy that you can kind of craft him in and give him his role and he's going to go. But a guy like – Oh, Bob Salad. Do you think he's going to sit back and let somebody else make all the decisions for him? Well, and Bob has a lot of opportunities right now, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. him being the favorite, I guess that's just because he's the next coach up, everybody thinks. But if you're Bob, why are you picking that gig over? Joe Douglas is literally in New York telling you everything that's wrong with the Eagles organization, recruiting him to go mm-hmm. coach yeah. up there. And it's all kind of playing out publicly. I don't know if they'll be able to get old Bob. I don't know if they'll be able to get Bob. I'm sure that's something they're worrying about, too. Like, they're, they're thinking, all right, hey, the top prospects that we want, they may not want to come here once if we extend an offer to this guy. That's exactly like um, – that's like the recruiting stories, you know? Because Joe Douglas knows every single flaw of the Eagles organization. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he literally – like – the ins and outs. Let me tell you what I fucking left up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Howie Roseman's running G. Do you want to go head coach? John? Listen, even if you don't pick us – I'm just telling you, that is not the place you want not to go. Philly. Okay, that's that would be that's a very tall task that the Eagles organization is up against because every person in interviews with with the Jets, if if Douglas wants that person, I would assume if it's down to the Eagles or the Jets, Douglas is going to have some things. But now, granted, maybe the Eagles do too, even though it seems like all of the stories coming out are the opposite direction. That's going to be tough for them to get a hire. Urban Myers down in Jacksonville too. You're not going to bring him out of there.
Jim Caldwell deserves a gig. Yeah. I hope he gets it. Wouldn't uh, Dable make sense with what he's done with Josh Allen? Like, if you, I mean, if there was a guy who could maybe fix Carson Wentz, he might be the guy who could do it. But if you're Dable, here's another thing. If you have another successful year at Buffalo, you're going to get more head coaching offers. True. Do you want to go to a place where you can't do it? I think that is something where, like Kellen Moore, for instance, like he might love that opportunity, right? Like, here we oh, go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a head coach. Nobody expected me to get this. Here we I've done good with the Dallas Cowboys. You know, Dak had his best year whenever I was calling plays or whatever. Here we go. Let me run this thing. And then I don't have to worry about all the other bullshit either yet, even if I don't want to, because you're kind of young and coaching and that whole thing. Maybe that's the thought. You're 100% right. Probably somebody young. I didn't even know Kafka existed nope. until today. Northwestern, great. Yeah. yeah. I remember when he was at Northwestern playing quarterback. Yeah. Was that your age, my age? He, I think he's a couple years younger than me. 2010 draft. Well, he is your yeah. He's around your he's, age. He uh, would have been at Northwestern while you were at West Virginia. Northwestern sent me a, a letter to recruit me. Oh yeah, oh, really? Yeah. You had up there? Well, they checked the grades. Oh. oh. I didn't get a single letter. Oh shit. Their loss. Me and Greenberg, dude. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Could have been repping for the Wildcats. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Go Cats. I didn't know Greeny was a Northwestern guy. Oh, purple all day, what, dude. dude? <laughs> you didn't know that? No. no. Broke him out of the Makes huddle. sense that a lot of the big time broadcasters did go to Northwestern. No, nah, most Syracuse. But the the thing about <laughs> the thing about Greeny with Northwestern is he's been like an honorary captain for them. Oh yeah. I think he's taken him out of the tunnel. He's let him out of the tunnel. He ran, sprinted held out with it, held the board, thing while uh -huh. they were just Everyone's, beating the shit out of him. He almost broke his arm. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You know that you know that. I do now, yes. Thank you for enlightening me. How, how'd you not know before that though? That was yeah, pretty you big. Definitely knew. You knew. You I, think knew. You knew. I usually don't. I don't know. Like some of my favorite broadcasters, I don't know which college most of them went to, but I would always guess Syracuse or Northwestern. Hmm. Safe guess. Did you ever guess for Greeny? Nope. I'd have no reason to ever guess a college of any broadcaster. <laughs> Well, you just, <laughs> you just you said, literally just said you some of your favorite broadcasters. About? Unprompted. If I was unprompted, I would never just be like, hey, man, where did, where in the world did uh, would Gary Danielson go to college? Like, that's never crossed my mind. You're putting Gary Danielson and Mike Greenberg in the same level? Whoa. What's your deal this week, dude? <laughs> Mike Greenberg, two Hall of Fames, bro. This is two Hall of Fames. Do you know who Gary Danielson is? Couldn't even guess. I, nope. see, I, don't, see, see, I don't even know if that's a person. He's, he's probably in a few Hall of Fames, dude. Gary Danielson? Mm -hmm. See the guy that did Happy Gilmore? Fern <laughs> <laughs> Lundquist. That guy's uh, a legend. Yeah. Yeah. That guy's awesome. I don't know Gary Danielson. Is he the color commentator? If you heard his voice, you would. Wait, but no clue. Yeah. Well, shout out to him. <laughs> Greeny in my eyes. I don't know. I didn't know the guy existed. No. Gary went to Purdue, by the way. Oh, okay. Good to know. <laughs> so you would have been wrong with your assumptions. <laughs> You're right. I would have been wrong. Do you have any breaking news yet now that they were 33 minutes into this hour? Come you, on. Have you gotten any text messages? Is that why your internet crashes? Because you're getting so much information? What Do we have any breaking news? Yeah, that's, that's what I like to do. I like to really stay in the mix, and I send out like 500 cold texts every day trying to get some info so I can nice. come on here and tell you something. We never said that. We just said in this particular situation, maybe old breaking news came jogging down your incredibly long driveway yeah, over there yeah. and just showed up in your lobby of your house just showed up and it just came in we're not saying that you reached out we're saying people know you they reach out to you do you have any breaking news that just showed up in your in your phone or your life i did not know do you no. think that urban meyer started sprinting down the street and ran up to my front door and told me hey good news just signed the deal uh, you guys are doing shows on yeah, wednesdays dude. at his bar yeah. I, I just assumed that Boots was potential. on the ground AJ. that's He's what we're talking about what is the purpose here you're on his boat you're on his boat oh yeah oh yeah it was what kind of plane was he on AJ? it was a citation i thought it was a citation are they, have they been tracking him? Have yeah. they been doing the whole plane plane oh, yeah. or whatever? Yeah, he already landed. Some, landed. Somebody within the airport took a photo. Kind of creepy, but yeah. it is Got out him. there. Got him. It was not even, they're calling it a Learjet. A Lear? Couldn't Whoa. tell you what that is. That's a good one, too. It flies. Yeah. I would. Ursa would probably send a G7. Uh, oh. Five? G5, yeah. I think it's nice. He has three of them. Oh, yeah. So that, that's probably what you would got if you came to Indianapolis, Urban. Uh, but, Steak I mean, you're in it within the division. So, so that's good. Uh, we got to get to a break. We'll wrap up this show on the other side. AJ will have breaking news whenever this break. All right. Yeah. That's called a tease. Oh, yeah. This is the Pat McAfee Show.
Hi, how's it going? My name is Pat McAfee. Used to hold balls for Adam Vinatieri. Now I'm in his home state. College game day is absolutely electric. And Brookings. <laughs> game day has made the voyage to Brookings, South Dakota to experience a game with the best fans in college football. I unfortunately cannot attend because I have a game this Sunday, so I sent a man I trust to make my picks. A man who is my holder for almost a decade. Please be nice to him. Welcome this week's celebrity guest picker, Pat McAfee. Go big, go blue, go Jacks. Let's see Auburn. Yes, everybody saw this. The best fake putt in the world. What do you think, Pat? I absolutely loved it all the way up until execution time. That is not one we like to show in the brand headquarters and punting and kicking world. Uh oh, dance off. Oh, let's get weird. Oh. Yes. Oh. Duck that, huh? Bang! Right oh. on the top of the dome. That makes it a lot easier when you got a dummy standing right in front of you like that. Running, running. He's oh! Hi, Daniel Russo! Wax on! Wax off! Knee to the face! Yes! Yes! Go! Yes! Go! Yes! Go! yes! He's being spit. With that pesky, they celebrate by doing shotguns. And I'm a big fan of that. I'm going to the University of Virginia Catholic. That was great. Whoa! since 4 a.m. College game day comes to town, they lose their mind. The population of this state is about 800,000, and when the Jackrabbits take the field, they're alongside all 800,000 South Dakotans. The Dakota Bunker was in Fargo for far too long. Today, 5 o'clock local time, the Dakota Marker is back in beautiful Brookings, South Dakota. Not only are you incredibly intelligent and handsome, you're a man of your word. You picked North Dakota today, so I, I had know, to bury you. That's okay. But it's been nothing but incredible. The college game day crew is hospitable. In South Dakota State, I think we can all agree, they showed up here. Yeah. But I loved it. I've watched the show, obviously, forever. And yeah. it's on in every single one of the locker room. So this is a big time deal for me, my family, my friends. All right. Not a bad little day here. Appreciate you, boys. It's from the training room of the Colts. AJ Watt tweeted. Text from every human that I've ever done television with, like since way back in the day. They're like, we knew this day would come. Quick managers, old teammates. I mean, you don't get to turn on Twitter often anymore. They make it damn near impossible. Go up onto a stage with a couple legends and talk some shit in front of the incredible South Dakota fans. You do not talk about Pat McAfee. You do not talk about Pat McAfee. One fight at a time, fellas. <laughs> the Pat McAfee Show. That's right. Uh, welcome back to the show. Sports show, big sports show, sports show. Huge sports, 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 sports show. Big sports show, sports, sports show. Couple sports. things to cover very quickly. Uh, I've learned that Mitt has been getting bullied by our callers, basically. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Yeah, Mitt said that he's been lied to a couple times. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, and I, because I asked him out there around the, uh, the uh, the water pipe out there, yep. the CBD thing. I said, "What what the hell's going on back here, pal? How, how? Because the P is nowhere near the S on the keyboard. So I didn't sure. even know how we got spam out of Sam. And he said that guy lied. And I said, "You think people are just kind of bullying you right now?" And he said, "Yeah." So I do have to take that into account that okay. maybe Mitt is getting outwitted and bullied by our callers. And I want to let you know, Mitt, I'm on your side, pal. Oh, I'm yeah. on your side, oh, Mitt. Boy, Mitt. Good luck, Mitt. He's saying something. Also, <laughs> AJ, uh, do you have any breaking news? 
I do not. Duh. Coach Hall. Damn you. No news about the Jacksonville Jaguars at all about anything going on down there. You and Urban Meyer do shows weekly. He just got hired. Is there any other hires that we should know about? Uh, no, I, I do not do shows weekly with Urban Meyer, and I have no information. <laughs> yeah, you do. You have done one okay. in a week. Anyways, we have breaking news. Uh, so just the other day, like 10,000 pages were released of declassified alien information. And uh, I guess the fish that people were fishing for yep. in these documents. And whenever you have a 10,000 page thing, you know, it's kind of hard to get through, I guess. And there's professional readers that ha this is their job to go through this whole thing. Uh, there was allegedly something found in these documents that we should talk about. Yeah. Go ahead and make that full screen there, Foxy. If you, no, just go ahead and take over the full screen with that photo there. Full screen. Go ahead and take over that thing. This is a reprint from the newspaper, Ternopil, Victorini, Cosmic Revenge. First paragraph published in boldface, text in parenthesis, inside of other parenthesis. Oh, yeah. The fuck is that? After Mikhail Gorbachev dissolved in 1991, the KGB top secret intelligence administration, a lot of material from that department found their way abroad, in particular to the CIA. As reported by the authoritative magazine Canadian Weekly World News, U.S. intelligence obtained a 250-page file on the attack of, by a UFO on a military unit in Siberia. Whoa. Uh. The file contains not only many documentary photographs and drawings, but also testimonies by actual participants in the events. One of the CIA representatives referred to this case as a horrific picture of revenge on the part of extraterrestrial creatures a picture that makes one's blood free jeez oh freeze okay <laughs> I thought it was free. free. I thought yeah. it was really drawing it home. blood free. You got to know that it is very, um, <laughs> exactly, this is not easy to read. I was like, according to the KGB materials, a quite low-flying spaceship in the shape of a saucer appeared above a military unit that was the shape of a saucer, no, conducting routine training maneuvers. <laughs> For unknown re it's blurry, dude. Yeah, For unknown reason, somebody unexpectedly launched a surface-to-air missile and hit the UFO. It fell to Earth not far away in five short humanoids with large heads and large black eyes yes. emerged from it. Let's go. It is stated in testimonies by the two soldiers who remained alive that after freeing themselves from the debris, the aliens came close together and then merged into a single object that acquired a spherical shape. That object began to buzz and hiss sharply and then became brilliant white. In a few seconds, the spheres grew much bigger and exploded by flaring up with an extremely bright light. At that very instant, 23 soldiers who had watched the phenomenon turned into stone poles. Whoa. Oh this is fake. No way. I don't know. How are we just now yeah. hearing about this? Motherfuckers yeah. are turning into stone yeah. poles? Yeah. yeah. My question. Get me out. Get it out. That you should keep going. It gets more absurd. Yeah. The it aliens gets, left survivors gets more to tell this. So you saw the stone poles and you didn't become a stone pole. Exactly. So they have a radius on them. What are they like a regional show? They only have a certain bandwidth. Uh -huh. There's people outside the bandwidth of three humans becoming one shooting up and only certain stone poles happen. It's both guys, Each guys, alien. guys. Have we learned nothing. You're, you're, check sources. We learned nothing from Jerry Dulac. This is from Russian propaganda mm -hmm. filtered through the CIA, yeah. funneled through By Canadian way, news. KGB. I did find it very interesting that we were able to just shoot their shit down. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's something that could just shoot them. Well, they back. might have had their uh, shields up on the UFO. Mm. Yeah, but I would just assume that they always have the shields. If you're, yeah, if you're flying through Russian airspace, you're going to have your shields up. Bro, well, this just, is the first they, time. They allegedly hopped. Three of them just went... Brr. Just walked into each other. They have their shields up at all fucking times. True. Yeah. They have. We got dolphins swimming around ships out at sea to protect. You don't think that the aliens in their UFO always have just something around it? Well, have when, to. when you're flying around Earth and you're never getting shot down until now, yeah. what it seems like you're it's probably not worried. You can't trust the KGB. And they got turned to limestone. Well, That's well, like the worst stone. Limestone? Oh yeah. Pretty good marble though is the one you'd well, wish for. It's the better one, yeah. Hey, isn't there a is there a follow up to this though? Like I cannot imagine we shot down an, an alien spacecraft. There's five humanoids walk out. We take them to a secret facility, and then that's it. They don't come back. The no, they left. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they did not get taken. They, <laughs> they, they oh, the, might. repaired the craft and got <laughs> out of there after they killed everyone. The they they hopped into a, a three person a. starship that yeah. they created themselves. Uh -huh. And just dipped out. Fixing jet. Let's get back to sports. It's bullshit. Those dudes, imagine them covering a kick, though. 
Oh, oh man. Three of them. Burr, burr, fucking shoot. See everybody ya. turns to stone. <laughs> fucking dead. Everybody. Let's get them on special teams. Yeah. What's up, Diggs? If we are getting back to sports, breaking news. John Wolford is out for the Packers game. Yeah, COVID? Uh -oh. Wolf? No. I mean, oh, because the neck. neck. Broke his neck. Okay, John Wolford, uh, T's and P's through your recovery for the shot that you took on your head, which led to what we think is a neck injury, which led to a photo of you getting into an ambulance <laughs> that was one of the oh. most scary things I saw on the internet over the weekend. Happy to hear he's okay. He's out. That means it's golf time. Now, you would think that it would be golf time because it's a divisional round playoff game and he's your quarterback that you paid $100 million to. But instead, that was still a question for a little bit for whatever reason. Goff versus Rodgers in Lambeau officially now that Wolford's been ruled out. T's and P's to the neck, pal. We enjoyed watching you play the football. Blake Bortles so, officially the backup for that game. Oh, Blake right. Bortles, Aaron Rodgers might happen this weekend uh -oh. in Lambeau. Let's keep oh. our eyes peeled. What were you going to say, AJ? That's, I was just going to ask about Bortles. So, yeah, now Bortles is in play. Like, he easily could be in a duel with Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs. What's Blake Bortles been up to? I, 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 I Hanging. I suppose Hanging. he's going to get out there and ball out, by the way. Let's not forget, Blake Bortles took that Jacksonville Jaguars team. Mm -hmm. Think about that. The fuck, the same ones that just had to, uh, hired Urban Meyer, have the number one overall pick, everything like that. Mm -hmm. He took that team just a few years ago, AFC Championship game. Mm -hmm. And if they didn't take a damn knee before half and they let Blake cook, they probably win that AFC Championship game, <laughs> yeah. represent in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Now, that has been some time. That has been some time, and those are very different teams all of a sudden. But Blake Bortles will go out there and cook some shit. Don't, don't get it twisted about Blake Bortles. I watched him score a touchdown against us in London, then punt the ball in his stands. Very good punt. <laughs> Bombed that thing. No penalty. No penalty at all. Mm -hmm. A lot of questions were asked to the ref. Called a fucking false start on me for a hard count on an extra point. Vinny had to kick a fucking damn near 40-yard extra point in London. Was not thrilled about that. But it was Walt Anderson b bullshit call. Mm -hmm. Blake Bortles can ball, AJ. Can he? Yeah, Blake can play. And, and on, there's something about it. Like, guys that get thrown in there with nothing to lose, I feel like. Yeah, it could go the other way, too. Yeah. I hadn't played in a while. I'm going to bet on that one. He's also got acclimated to the cold weather being in Denver and the snow True. and whatnot. That does worry, worry me a little bit. Oh, that Blake's been there, done that. Yeah. My yeah. high, actually. He's been fucking snowboarding while mm -hmm. playing football. Yeah. <laughs> Blake's awesome. Anytime Blake's in the NFL, it's good for mm. everybody. Boats don't sail in Green Bay. That's funny. All right. The, the thought of... Man, they're going to win by 50. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to stop saying it. I got to stop really saying it because Ty saying. is not happy about it. Oh, How no does curses. Green Bay not win this by 100? Oh, no. What happened? The only way Foxy just. Hey. There's no such thing as curses, Foxy said. Well, there isn't. It's all there a joke. Yeah. I, I think the only thing that could really make Packer fans worry is if they fall behind early. Like, we know if the Packers jump out, let's say they look like they do a lot this year, and Aaron just systematically moves down the field, boom, 7 nothing. Defense gets a stop. They go up 10 or 14 nothing early in the – maybe early in the second quarter. That's when you got to worry because I don't know if the Rams are built to come from behind like that. I agree. We don't know what that Rams team looks like with Blake Bortles. That's true. Yeah. We might do be running not read know option. what that looks like. Let's get to the phone, shall we? Hey, you're making all your picks tomorrow, right? All of them, yeah. Sure. Let's go. Are you comfortable and confident in the picks you're going to make? Absolutely. How do you feel about our guy Lombo Bombo this morning? Fucking Lombardi breaking the news about Urban Meyer. Yeah, how did he become the guy to break it? I don't know. He's got people. He does. He knows everybody. You're right. He yeah. does. Did uh, I saw Schefter tweeted shortly afterwards and kind of had his version of this. Still tweet. good. Well, it wasn't just – I mean, every insider had a quick follow-up mm -hmm. about – because I would assume every insider knew that something was probably about to happen, but they were being told that it hasn't officially happened yet, so they're waiting on it, they're waiting on it. But they, I think they all – they probably didn't know that the rest of the world didn't know that that was definitely happening, you know? So I think old Lombo got the bombo and said, hey, here we go. This is what I'm being told, if you guys want to know. Let he it dipped, dipped his toes – into the breaking news pond this morning. Crushed it. And there's a couple of places that have given him credit. There's some that have not, huh. but it feels like every piece of information everybody has at some point. Well, yeah, the fact that Lombardi said there's a press conference later today, have we seen anything? Have the Jacksonville said anything about scheduling any kind of media availability? That's a great question. Maybe Lombo did. did maybe this Jump is a digs-like thing. That is <laughs> what uh, Schefter later said, is that 
no press conference today as of yet. He got the most but important But Urban Meyer part. did land in Jacksonville. Yeah. He did. Came off a Learjet, we learned, by the way. Mm -hmm. He got the most important part correct. That's all that matters. <laughs> Just like you, Tony. Just, Just like, like you. you. Can't be caught up in all the minutia of surrounding it. You got to let the sun shine through. Oh, yeah. That's right. Amen, COVID Cowboys. Well said. New t shirt. Hey, Pink Sky at Night. Sailor's Delight. <laughs> Pink Sky in the Morning. That's the Sailor's Warning, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Heath in Iowa. Thank you, Cowboy. <laughs> How's it going? And I'd like to congratulate AJ on a potential new job in Jacksonville. Hey, AJ, oh, yeah. congrats. Got any breaking news, dude? Thank you. If I get offered, I will accept. I'll let you know, I'll let you know right now. Whoa. Breaking news. All right. Huge. But I'd like to know the potential landing spots for J.J. Watt. What do you think him going to the Packers and giving that hometown discount? That would be interesting, him going to the Packers. They love him up in Wisconsin, I would assume. Add him to the rotation there uh, into the, uh, you know, the pressure room, defensive and outside linebackers. Uh, Steelers, you know, why not the Steelers time? They're losing Bud Dupree. Bud Dupree is going to go to the market. He's going to be elsewhere. Uh, a couple watts off the edge. Whoa. You know what I mean? Derek playing fullback special teams. I would assume uh, there's a couple different landing spots. How about, like, the, the Chargers? I mean, they, they, you look at teams that, like, care deeply about their defensive line. Look for them to bring him in to be like a, uh, okay, here we go. I have a question because Bud just posted it on his Instagram that he was in the Steelers facility rehabbing. He's a free agent. How long do you still rehab with the team that you're with before you become a free agent? Is like, is that the is new it year? March? Or is that is it March it is? one or something like that? Is that what it is, AJ? Do you know? Yeah, probably. It's probably March first or March fifteenth. Like whatever the first day of the league year is, then I guess you're officially a free agent. He's officially still on the team until that day. Hmm. Where do you think JJ is going, dude? Steelers. Why what, don't you think that would be number one on his list if he if he enjoys being around his brothers? Yeah, go play for the Steelers, a team that can win. And you get to play with both your brothers. Like, how often does that happen? Yeah, it would be pretty cool, I'd assume, for them. Better take a hell of a haircut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this COVID cowboy from Pittsburgh. <laughs> Jesus, dude. I mean, unbelievable. Okay. I would assume he would, by the way. Has Diggs, got, has Diggs gotten to speak to whatever Weed Boy 420 or whatever that broke the news with him? Weed <laughs> Boy 420. That's a better name. I like that name a lot. Hey, we had a Zoom call last night to congratulate each other. We were <laughs> sick of cognac. A sip of cognac. Let's go to Greg in Texas. What's going on, Greg? Hey, what's going on, guys? How y'all doing? Cool. Hook them, bro. Hey, that accent is awesome, Greg. Hey, man. It's natural. Just born with it, baby. Hey, that's – yep, I agree. All right, all right. Can't wait. What do you want to talk about? Well, man, I want to talk about – I was pissed off in the off season when the Cowboys didn't go ahead and give the nod to Kellen Moore to be the uh, head coach there. And instead, we're stuck with this stooge, McCarthy. <laughs> and <Whoa>. – um, <laughs> I don't know. It's very uncharacteristic of Jerry Jones, but how long until next season do you think before they fire him and go ahead and make help? <laughs> Greg's got no fucking hope in that Cowboys team. <laughs> yeah. How long? How many losses we got to go through before they fire this guy? I wonder if that's how all of Dallas feels about your guy, AJ. I don't know. I mean, I guess they're going to – Man, he better come out of the gates hot next next year. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like he rolling. Like they need to come out and go six and zero to shut people up. It sounds like that is the case. I mean, you got Dan Quinn over there calling that defense. Right, bring it back. You know what I mean? Bring him back. Mike McCarthy on the offensive side. Ooh. Dan Quinn on defense side. Let's go. Let's go win this thing in 2015. Bring in Freddie Kitchens. <laughs> 2014. Let's go get it, dude. It's pretty amazing how quickly like you can come in. Oh, this is a great hire. You and Jerry get along. You're playing well. Oh, my starting quarterback goes out. Oh, I want. To, I should be fired after my first season here in the middle of what a five-year deal. <laughs> you're saying people are a little quick to judge. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and, and who knows if it's going to work out or not? None of us know. But I'm like, man, if I'm going to hire a head coach, I guess you got to give him at least two seasons, right? But if it if it is one thing though, if an owner or GM decides to move on from a player or a coach early, and they're like, you know what? Hey, my mistake. I messed up. This shouldn't have happened. This person shouldn't be here push them, let's let them go. Like, that's better than trying to hold on to somebody just because it's one of your guys. And, by the way, I mean, you can even win a Super Bowl and be fired early. You yeah. know what mm -hmm. I mean? Shout out to Doug Peterson. Got a statue. Let's go to Craig in Alabama and a statue. Yeah. Let's go to Craig in Alabama. What's going on, Craig? What's up, guys? Huge fan of the show. My wife's actually making fun of me because I was excited for getting through. Huge fan. AJ, huge fan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, AJ, something to watch out for when they give you – when you send in your resume to Jacksonville – 
you could possibly be working for Luke Fickle as a defensive coordinator down there because I don't see why they wouldn't bring him in with the uh, pass he's got with Ohio State. And also, when are we going to start bringing context back into football conversations? I called Tua being a bust. If you look at the context, what was around him in Alabama, it was right there for eyes to see. <laughs> right there for the eyes yeah. to see? I love Same that guy. <laughs> I fucking love that Just guy. Just make a statement and be like, What's your excuse? It's right there. I mean, shit, we all you. fucking saw it. <laughs> oh, <thank God. laughs> Craig, appreciate you, buddy. Um, is to a bus. Wow. Whoa. Got to that conversation quick. We got about 20 seconds left, AJ. I know you want to say a lot of very motivating things to the listeners here on SiriusXM, but we do not have time. Chris Mad Dog <laughs> also <laughs> with Mad Dog on <laughs> is next. His show will be much better than ours. We'll be back, Minyana. This has been the Pat McAfee Show. You got about six minutes until some greatness. Use it wisely. <laughs> Sneak it in there. How many words can you fit into half a second? Mm. Use it wisely is where we landed on. Um, AJ, how'd you feel about Craig from Alabama there? That last caller? Yeah. I mean, I, it does make sense when you're saying, hey, man, all of his receivers are open. He's got all these first rounders. But yeah, hey, Joe Burrow had the, probably more talent on his LSU offense, too. He stepped in and did all right. Yeah, the, true. And I think it's, you know, I guess right there for the eyes to see, though, you know, <laughs> on whether or not. And I think Tua, I think Tua was so accurate. You know, in college, he was so accurate, which made you think in the it's going to translate to the NFL because he'll be able to put it in the spots. And I think the biggest complaint about Tua is he doesn't pull the trigger and he doesn't throw it, which is normally good because he doesn't turn the ball over or he isn't like risky with the ball. But I guess there's a fine balance there on when you got to pull the trigger. He might have a new offensive coordinator next year if he's with my. He will have a new offensive coordinator next year, no matter where he's at. Who knows if that'll be a bust? But I do enjoy that guy saying it's pretty obvious this guy's gonna stink in the NFL. <laughs> Alabama fan. He also talked about uh, Urban Meyer hiring Luke Fickle. That's an interesting thing because Fickle. Okay, we talked about this off air. Fickle lost his defensive coordinator, Stud, and we talked about this yesterday, I believe, with you, Marcus Freeman. Freeman. He took some of his coaches from Cincinnati down to he is now coaching at he's the defense coordinator for Notre Dame. Notre Dame. So he went over and up. They he's now the defensive coordinator. He didn't go down. I thought he went to the SEC. To be honest with you, he went to ACC. Mm-hmm. ACC. Smart. But it's actually a team that's up in the north, north, north. So <laughs> he leaves, takes some of his coaches. I wonder if Fickle's running into the same problem that Rich Rod ran into at West Virginia, where they couldn't afford the assistant coaches. Right? You talked about this yesterday. You alluded to this yesterday. Is that enough for Luke Fickle to potentially go? Okay, I want to leave here because I assume he has a lot of offers to go anywhere else in college. He's done a hell of a job there he's turned down officer four from michigan state west virginia and a few others i believe but do you think he you know him pretty well i think would he ever want to make the jump to being an nfl defense coordinator an nfl coach i think uh yeah i, I think he'd be a guy that would be open to coaching in the league i mean he's best friend he grew, he's been best friends with rabel for 30 years like they talk forever like all the time so he has like that same tough tough guy mindset they're different personalities but I could see him making the jump, but he's not going to make the jump from head coach winning a ton of games to a D coordinator in the league. I think the only way he would ever make the move if it's head coach to head coach. Just like Urban Meyer, almost saying like, hey, put a little respect on my name. I I deserve what I've done here in my coaching resume. I should be the head coach. Yeah, that was something I missed with. Uh, I didn't ask about uh, yesterday to uh, old Coach Rod. He went from being head coach to offense coordinator. Now he's offense coordinator again for a team he won't own to. I wonder how that dimension is like mentally going from like – all right, I run everything too. Okay, now you're this. That could be pen, uh, potentially difficult. That'd be hard to do, I'd say. I think if you're like a, you've been a head coach for 15, 20 years, and then whatever happens, you end up getting fired. Someone brings you in to be a coordinator. Like you're so used to being the guy that everybody looks to, that starts every meeting, that runs the schedule, that does everything. And now you're just one of the guys. You're just another coach. And what if you think the guy stinks? Yeah. Mm. This guy stinks. <laughs> Can't do this. We should not be doing this. Also, <laughs> though, have you ever talked to some of those guys? Some. There's a little bit of relief, too, at times because they don't have to deal with all the garbage every single day. A lot of D coordinators talk to the media, what, maybe once a week, if that? Like, some guys barely talk to the media at all. Would you want to be – you would want to be a D coordinator if you ever got into coaching? I mean, yeah, I'd want to be a head coach, but you would, I'd, I would have no problem trying to be a D coordinator. Is that what you're going to do? We have some breaking news. Jerry Dulac, Miami Dolphins, received permission <laughs> from Steelers to talk to quarterback coach Matt Canada about their offensive coordinator job. Canada there today. Jerry Dulac does have sources. Oh, okay? yeah. Yesterday, 
The sources <laughs> led him to write an article and led us astray. But Jerry Dulac does know. Miami Dolphins received permission from the Steelers to talk to quarterback coach Matt Canada about their offense coordinator job. Gumpy, how do you feel about this? Do you know anything about this guy? I know absolutely nothing about this guy. I want uh, – give me Pep Hamilton. He was also on the list. There was a list of players or coaches that the Dolphins were bringing in. If you're Pep and you work for the Spanos family anyways, are you leaving Los Angeles with Herbert there? No. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to get a head coaching job? I don't think so. Would no Lincoln way. Riley leave college for an OC or would it have no. to be a head coaching job? I think that's another head coaching job. Have to be head coach. I think Lincoln Riley is an interesting candidate. I I would love to interview Lincoln Riley. I think he is one of those offensive guys that also builds the culture. I think he'd be a good NFL coach. It was, he doesn't want to do it. He re-signs, I think, with Oklahoma every year whenever there's a rumor that he's potentially going to the NFL and they bump it up like another $2 million or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's had a lot of success. I wonder what it is. They just got to feel like the timing right, the situation's right. Like, for instance, if the Philadelphia Eagles job or the Houston Texans job were the only two jobs available, you could see how people would be like, ah, I'm not going to make the jump. But this year, there are such a vast amount of options for head coaching jobs. It's like, if this isn't the year, when is the year? You know, and how much does he want to prove? Maybe he wants to prove a bunch in college, like Urban has, maybe win the big one and then make the jump. But, and I assume they're taking care of him rather well. And his oh, yeah, dollar yeah. goes pretty far, I'd assume, in Oklahoma. Yeah. He probably living like a goddamn king over there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Go for Lincoln, dude. Mm -hmm. What is his house? His house is probably awesome. I'm sure it is. Massive. It's like Cliff Kingsbury down there in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Got that drug lord house. Good for him. Pretty crazy how Cliff in the, in Arizona, they started out like, oh, this is amazing. Look at everything's working great. And then, oh, should they fire Cliff? They're asking towards the end of the season. Like, man, and, it's amazing how fast it can happen. And is Kyler going to yeah. play? Yeah. Does Kyler want to go play baseball? Mm. Feels might. like it. Maybe Lincoln Riley's waiting for Cliff to get fired. He's going to come in back in there with Kyler. And, right, let's run it back. And I'll take your house, too. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and I'll take your house. Let's go to Carter in Virginia. What's going on, Carter? Hey, Pat. I uh, hope you're doing well. I love the show. Um, just want to say I'm a, Thanks, I'm a lifelong Packers fan, so I've been watching Packers since, uh, since I was born, basically. Um, my, my family's all from Wisconsin, but I was calling in because I'm actually an independent rapper and artist, and I made Let's a tribute go. song called Hype Like Aaron Rodgers. Let's go. It's releasing tomorrow on SoundCloud, and then next week on all platforms, and I just want to see if I could potentially get a you know, reaction from you guys for that or from Aaron himself. Okay, probably not for Aaron there, but the um, the reaction to your song, it, I don't understand the full SoundCloud. Can we download that fresh off of SoundCloud and put it up here? I'm so, spinning so. it now. Yeah, so I can I can upload that. It's releasing tomorrow, so I don't have it on there yet. But you know, I'm talking to you now, so I can hear upload that right now, now. and I can send you over a private link. Let's hear it. Can we hear it now? Yeah. Preview. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let me go ahead and upload that and then send it over to you. No, 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 no. Can you just? Get, what's the name of the song, Carter? It's called Hype Like Aaron Rodgers. Hype Like Aaron Rodgers. What's mm. your, is your name just Carter? So my rap name is King Cops. Yes. Run that back. I don't think I, King Cops? No, no, sorry. No, it's King Cots. C-O-T-Z. Cots. Oh, like yachts like and cots like and thoughts cot. and things mm -hmm. like that. You're on, you're, you're not on the bed. You're on the cot. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You got it right. King Cots. So you, you bounce around house to house. Not not quite, but maybe show to show if I if my music career takes off. Oh, so that's why you're called King Cots. Oh, uh, it's it's actually the Cots is actually just combining my first and last name, so that's uh, why I came up with it. Oh, uh, uh, I was gonna have that. Okay, so Carter something King Cots, uh, King Cots yeah, out of exactly. Virginia. What city in Virginia? I'm from Richmond. Oh, oh Rich, go spiders, go spiders, go, go spiders, spiders down there. All right, man. Well, good luck with the song. Hype like Aaron Rodgers. We can't wait to hear it. I assume if it's good, though, Aaron will probably hear it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be fantastic. I mean, that's, that's my dream. I've actually got, I've got a painting. Uh, my mom actually created a painting. She's a, she's a fantastic artist. She doesn't like to take a lot of credit, but that's my, what my uh, cover artwork is actually going to be, is that painting oh. that she created of him. It's, it's oh, absolutely God. amazing. Mama Cots, dude. That's Family awesome. <laughs> Queen Cots. Exactly. How long have you um, been rapping? So are you terrible, it? Carter? Are you terrible at rapping? Like, is, are you, you know what I mean? Like, are you, you're a good rapper, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I've gotten over 100,000 streams just this year. Oh, wow. Oh, let's been, go, King I'm, Cots. I'm completely independent. You know, I do oh, everything go. myself. I'm, I'm my own label, Fuck my own publisher. Labels. I'm the artist, you know. 
You got a freestyle? Yeah, we respect that for sure, especially around here. I, well, I'm not going to put you on the spot to freestyle. This could be King Cuts, you know, biggest opportunity. Yeah, yeah, true. I'm not going to put you on that. But I, I, um, what type are you? A, a mumble rapper? A lot of sounds coming out. Are we, are we a lyricist, King Cuts? Yeah, lyricism. I'm not. I'm not really about to mumble rap. You know, I like to have oh, I have yeah. heavy wordplay in the song. A lot of football terminology. It's completely clean, Ooh. actually, just so it can be played Smart. everywhere. But I'm very Smith. lyrical. Smith. So I've been writing yep. songs over 15 years. And um, it's more about, you know, conscious hip hop, you know, trying to raise awareness and trying to get good lyrical meaning and actual music, you know, like it like it was, you know, when rap started. What stories are you telling King Kotz? You talking about your mama painting some paintings? Uh, you're talking about in this song or just overall? Well, in this song, it's obviously about Aaron fucking Rogers, right? Yeah. King Kotz, I mean, you called it hype like Aaron yeah. Rodgers. That's probably <laughs> what it's like. Right. So overall, I mean, overall, my my grand, my, you know, my my big message and inspiration is to change the world through my music, and to really inspire you know all of humankind and everyone on earth to, to really combine together, to unite together, because there's a lot of division in the world. So oh my God. I'm trying to have you know a little bit something that's different, yeah. a stronger message that people can resonate with and Amen. can really you know break down the boundaries that divide everyone Amen. across the earth. Thank you, King Kotz. Good luck tomorrow. Can't wait to hear the song. Thanks for the conversation. Is that Ted Kaczynski? Might be. <laughs> Kaczynski? <laughs> oh, God. The aliens are not going to like that. Oh, no. What if King Kotz just got incredible flame, though? You I, guys are just out here. No, no, no. I, I'm very Yeah, you guys were laughing you I, were doing. I legitimately okay. wrote down the future of kids bop, King Kotz. Whoa. I, I just put Come King, King Kotz. Clean. Is it C-O-T-S, you think? Yeah, yeah that's what yeah, he's like called. No, I can't find him on I found, I found his I YouTube. Found I found his YouTube page. I found C -O -T -Z. SoundCloud as well. C-O-T-Z. Um, Hold on, he's on. He's on this one over here. Oh, Hold on. I found him. Hold on, he's on here. Can't wait to hear. You want trouble? Football Troubles. Yeah. Peppered in there. Trouble's going. Oh, I got it. He, by the way, the crown is dope by him. I'm going deep like Devon. Here we go. All right. Sounds like he's a woke rapper. Is what it sounds like. Ooh. No, he's changing the world, dude. About to find Slow out. Down, okay, so here's his top five songs. Good. The compliment. Top five songs. He has together forever. Ooh. Twenty-eight thousand five hundred seven streams. Let's go. Then he has Trouble, mm -hmm. and then he has Doomsday. Ooh. Oh, oh man. Which one do we want to listen to? Trouble's number one on SoundCloud. Together Forever sounds like a banger. That's number one on this particular one. All right, let's go with Trouble. Okay. All right? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is King Cots out of Richmond, Virginia. Let's go. He Cots. called and asked for us to do this, basically, mm -hmm. so I don't feel bad about this. Mm -hmm. We would like everybody to have genuine reactions. Okay. Once we listen to the song, we will start with AJ Hawk's reaction mm -hmm. first, then we will go around the room. Okay? Yes. Sounds Let's good. Let's do it. Sound please, Jay. Thank you. This is trouble. Although it says it's explicit, he does not swear. <laughs> Clean. Oh, shit. Was that you that said shit? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I thought that was his song. Like, shit. Oh, sounds like trouble. A little bit there. I'm really having trouble telling my days from nights. I'm really having trouble finding my place in life. Ah. I'm really having trouble taking only good advice. I'm really having trouble with so much on my mind. Okay. King Cots, <laughs> Richmond, Virginia. Waiting for the good start. What's that? <laughs> The beat to oh, you wanna Holy okay. Shit. <laughs> I'm really having trouble finding my voice in life. I'm really having trouble taking only good advice. I'm really having trouble with so much on my mind. Have you been troubled? Have you been humbled? Have you ever stuttered or have stumbled? Let's not bubble with no mumble jumble rumble. I'm the one of Okay. Doesn't mumble jumble. Let's go. Hey, Cot's got bars, dude, huh? Oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like he does have very personal uh, songs. Mm -hmm. AJ, what do you think? And I'm gonna, I'm probably not gonna listen because you know, I don't want to learn that much about him. Feels like he's he's really spilling his heart out there. But I do appreciate what he's doing. Oh, yeah. I can't wait I, to hear about his upper middle class frustration. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Have you ever, fumbled, you know, have you ever stuttered or fumbled and, and getting, through stumbled? Getting fucking beaten up at a lacrosse game because there was no. All right, oh, he's no, not King no, Cots, okay? no, don't know that. You don't know King Cots, man. Sorry. Getting choked out with a Vineyard Vines belt. You don't know oh, King Cots, dude. 
I imagine that's what it starts to sound like when you've been sitting in the garage for about 10 minutes with the car still running and the garage door shut. That's probably what you get the sound that pops into your ear. What is this? Damn, Damn, what is, is going King Kotsky? on? Barry, AJ, what's Damn. so funny? That is not funny. That is rude. What are you talking about with King Kotz, dude? Jesus. Why? Wait, Nick, why do you go to somebody trying to commit suicide in their what garage? What are you talking about? <laughs> Just hanging out in the garage. With the garage door down, the car running? This show stinks, dude. <laughs> But there, the window is open, H. He, hey, I'm going to listen to hype like Aaron Rodgers tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Can't wait. Dropping on SoundCloud. Let's go to Matt in Michigan. What's going on, Matt? Yeah, uh, first off, that guy stinks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's like when What's-Her-Name uh, freezed out on. <laughs> he <is Alia>. <laughs> he <laughs> said that Fucking trash! <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Secondly, That's a good one. Um, Foxy is not allowed in Michigan ever again. He's all right, Matt, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll never be back. So I third of all, I got some breaking news for the Jaguars here. It's been reported Tim Tebow will not join the Jaguars as a player or coach and off that tie. Are you now concerned that he's going to bat about 750, <laughs> picturing your face on that ball, hitting it all the way up to heaven? That's what we're talking about. Oh, man. I hope he does. But, you know, then they're going to realize, oh, this this guy can't hit a fucking curveball. Throw one of those. You know, Ty went off on Tim Tebow earlier I, for I no reason, by the way. For no reason at all. He just buried his baseball dreams deeper than anything I've ever seen before. I, mean, I, did, I did not. Well, what were you going to say, AJ? You seem like a Tebow guy. Like, I figured you you grew up Jesus. watching Tebow, and you've always loved him. Loves you. I am a Tebow guy. I said that. We met him at the Super Bowl. Tebow is a great guy. Tebow is great at a lot of things. You know what? I want to play quarterback for the, for the fucking Packers, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> Just like Tebow is never going to make it to the fucking big leagues because he stinks at baseball. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. He's a New York Times bestseller. Congrats, he, by the way, as of today. Congrats, Tim. He's a humanitarian. He might be Christ reincarnated. Yeah. But guess what, you know? I mean, he fucking stinks at baseball. That there's there, there's nothing wrong with that, Tim. The opinions of Ty Schmidt do not reflect <laughs> that of his employer, but his employer would ask him about his baseball opinions on something because his employer doesn't know much about baseball and he does know a lot about baseball. I hope Tim makes it to the bigs. I do. I do. I he'll get embarrassed big time <laughs> if he goes up there, but I really hope he does make it. If that's what his heart desires, go get it, Tim. Tim is so good at everything. He uh, is, except baseball. <laughs> but is is Tim a better baseball player than your boy Russell Wilson? No. No, not even close. <laughs> that was a deal. Really? Yeah, Russell Wilson could, you know, fucking throw with the opposite hand and bat on the other side of the plate, and I'm pretty sure he'd still be <laughs> a lot better than Tim Tebow. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh, shit. <laughs> you were so rude. I'm, I'm like, not. I mean, at what point do you just have some self-awareness and be like, hey, guess what? This isn't for me. And I got a lot of great stuff lined up, which I could go really commit to. But no, you know, I want to ride around on fucking double-A buses with my buddies. He loves the game. And strike out on the He loves you know, the game. He has a dream. It. And you said it yourself. You're saying Jesus Christ can't learn to hit a curveball, dude? Excuse me? Is that what you're thinking? Excuse me? Ted, it certainly appears that way. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Let's go to Brett in Buffalo. What's going on, Brett? What's up, boys? Holy shit, Ty. Let the shovel down. You just buried Tim Tebow half to hell. That's no. right. Yeah, you did. No, you no, did. No, no. Yeah, don't worry about Tim. We'll stick his hand through the dirt like Undertaker. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> and go right back to heaven, though, no matter what Ty does. Holy shit, Ty, look out for that tombstone pile driver then from Tebow, my God. Hey, don't you know, Paul? Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, two Take things, number one. Hold on, hold on, Brett, one second. Brett, one second. Sure. Brett, one second. Sure. Who gives a better tombstone pile driver, you think? Mongo McMichael or Tim Tebow? <laughs> Mongo. Oh, that's a good question. Huh? That's a good question. Tim Tebow does. Right, Tebow. Oh, Mongo. Mongo, baby. We're talking about Mongo. Mongo. <laughs> yeah. You're right. One of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Of all time. The, the. Although I'd pay money to see Tim Tebow tombstone tie. That'd be fun. That I'd rather see fun, Tim Brett. do it because then he, if he did snap the person's neck, he would then bring just him bring, bring him, back him right back. <laughs> like the avatar tree when a heel yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then tombstone him again. <laughs> the, what a finish. The false, <laughs> oh, the yeah. false finish of when he breaks the neck and he goes for the pin. One, the whole place, two, and then he'll go, no, 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 wait, and then he fix the neck, and everybody's like, oh, my God, and then he picks him back up and fucking does it again. Oh, my God. 
That would be great for wrestling. And you also, side note, uh, watch a lot of Mongo McMichael videos. Mm -hmm. um, I have no idea how you can be that great at football and do that in a wrestling ring. Shout it is very ball. impressive. It is very, very impressive. The ability just to lose what it seems to be all coordination. Oh. I don't know how. <laughs> no. I don't know how you do it. Fish out of water. Yeah, it's coordination. It was enter it's entertaining. <laughs> oh, but oh, yeah. I feel like a lot of guys were literally risking their lives going in. <laughs> okay. And the Tombstone Power Driver being the finish is one of my favorite things that ever happened because at some point that has to get pitched and somebody had to be like, that's a terrible idea. Let's go with it. I want to die. <laughs> Imagine he taking that. This guy had to be shaking in their boots. Oh, my <laughs> God. Mongo, by the way. If he was wrestling today, I would watch. Oh, okay? yeah. Oh, yeah. I am thoroughly entertained. Bring him back. But I just have a lot of questions about how it all happened and everything like mm -hmm. that. I absolutely love it. And if he was wrestling today, I would watch every single episode. Hell of a promo on Mongo. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Can oh. you bring him to OCW? OCW should make a comeback at some point, mm -hmm. but I yeah. do fear that the current pandemic would affect that a little bit. Mongo went into hiding after he stopped wrestling. Mongo did? Yeah, you never heard from him again. He owns a sports pub in Chicago. Yeah, that's pretty good. Does he really? I think so. Yeah. Is he ever there? Probably. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, there's no restaurants open right now in Chicago, to be honest with you. True. But before that, did we see? Because I didn't even know this guy existed until Mongo Clips or something mm -hmm. popped yeah. up on I'm Twitter. I'm going to guess Mongo is always at his restaurant or his pub. Okay. All time. Mongo's Meat Market just pumping out the greatest meat of all time. <laughs> bologna, bologna, oh, bologna, who wants bologna. It? Who wants it? Oh, yeah. Salami everywhere. Wow. Pastrami. He's like, you ever see what? these, AJ? You know who we're talking about? Yes, I, I met Mon, Mongo a couple years ago at a charity golf thing in Chicago, and I he gave me a signed picture of himself, and I think, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Someone... If somebody presented an offer to him um, to wrestle, I think he would still be on board. Yeah. He gave me a signed picture of himself. What a Not line just to drop in there. The whole table. He gave the whole table one. Good you guy. still have it? Good guy. I do have it somewhere. Say if that. I can find it, I will bring Say it that. It. It's, like, it's like those player cards, those rookie cards. Are only, that's only going to grow I mean, in value for so sure. Weird. He's getting another resurgence here. I didn't even know existed. I love him. Um you guys want to take a fucking picture or what? Who was it? <laughs> uh, I'm fucking the kip. Yeah. Kipper. Kipper. That happened to us up in Canada. You know how you just basically said Mongo came and gave you autographed pictures of himself or whatever, which is a hilarious thing. Very nice of him. Happy to have it. But the ability to go and do that, you have to be, I mean, that is a very interesting thing. You know, just hand out. And You're that's why Mongo is Mongo, by yep. the way. That's why he is awesome. Up in Canada, we were at a restaurant and uh, I told, uh, what was his name? Kipper, Kipper. Nick Kiprios. Kiprios up in Canada. I'd seen some hockey clips with him in it. He was uh, one of the faces of hockey up in Canada. And at the, uh, at the restaurant, we walked by, and I told him, I'm like, hey, big fan, man. He was obviously in some sort of business meeting. I, I thought we'd put him over or whatever, you know, a little bit. Hey, <laughs> hey, big fan, man, you know? Like, uh, and he goes, oh, thanks or whatever. And then we go away, and uh, he comes over to say hello to, to the group or whatever. And as it's ending, he goes, yeah, you guys want a fucking picture or what? <laughs> Oh, nice. It was awesome. You guys get one? one of oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Had to. Had to. It was awesome. He was so cool. Who was, who was this guy? Dude, you know. I didn't know who Nick he was. Kipper. You know, Kipper. You know the Kipper. Canadian legend, AJ. I know. I know the, I know the Kipper. Believe me. He does the hockey. <laughs> yeah. He plays See, the hockey, didn't he? Season's over, by the way, yeah, NHL. Yeah. Sad. But Sydney scored, though. Isn't that all you cared about? Well, no, I mean, not necessarily. I obviously care about a fucking W over the worst franchise in the NHL, the Philadelphia Flyers. But him scoring definitely made a lot of money for a lot of people. Also, the overhitting made a lot of money for a lot of people. Mm. I mean, there was a lot to happen. But the NHL season's done because it looks like the Pittsburgh Penguins are uh, potentially the worst hockey team to ever put on skates. Mm. Does Nick agree with that? The the, Nick thinks I I'm think overreacting, the that but before the game, game, he told me they were going to stink, and then now he's like, well, uh, be patient. I didn't say they were going to stink. I said I think it's going to be a tough year in a hard division. Pat interpreted it as, oh, they're going to stink. Yeah. Tough year? Fuck. If they're good, it's not going to be a tough year. It's going to be a fun year. Hard division because <laughs> the And then night one, right. night one, the goddamn goalie's just rolling over on his back, letting pucks just slide right by him in the third period. Hey, pal, there's three periods in fucking hockey, okay? Need you. It was game one, okay? They got him again on Friday night. It's a long season, a lot of time. It's, not, it's actually a short season. It's yeah. fucking, uh, <laughs> fucking 56 games. 
Brett from Buffalo. What are we talking about? There's me and the kipper, yeah. dude. Wow. There he is right there. There he is right there. Whoa. Like fucking photo or what going on, dude? Kip looks good still. He did look very good. Very yeah. handsome. He was handling Jeez. business. He's awesome. Anyways, Brett Buffalo, what, what are we talking about, pal? That was a really fun uh, bird walk there. That was fun. I had no idea about Kiprios. That, he sounds like a fascinating guy. Oh, the best uh, <laughs> nuclear weapon. <laughs> he was. Um, all right, two things. Number one, Boston Connor, you're still scared of my bet. Won't let you live it down. Number two, oh, yeah. looking forward, how do the Bills fix their pass rush? Because, like, granted, last week against the Colts, uh, they're one of the best offensive lines in the league, but like we spent the most money in the entire league on defensive line, and they stink. Oh yeah. Well, Brett, you probably know more than I do about that because you've watched it much closer and are much more passionate about that. I will say that this Buffalo Bills team is very good, so maybe they spent the money in the right spot. Are they going to beat the Ravens this weekend? And does pass rush matter in this game? Answer: No. Uh, this is going to be a Who's going to get in there and make a play game? Mm -hmm. I'm really pumped for this game, AJ. Like, really fucking pumped for this game. All right, when is this game being played? Uh, Saturday night. Saturday, yeah, prime time. After the Packers. Yeah, this game's going to be awesome. I mean, I have no idea what's going to happen. I really don't. All right, let's go real quick on early thoughts. We've got to get out of here because Hammer Don is in nine minutes or whatever <laughs> um, on this YouTube channel. It's a show about gambling. Hell <laughs> yeah. yeah. We have what? the greatest hockey better in town. Oh, yeah. Greatest soccer better in town. Mm -hmm. The hottest football better in town, who's a COVID cowboy, and a guy who knows more about football than anybody else on earth. Mm. Who broke the Urban Meyer days. Pretty good. That's starting in eight minutes or so. I'm probably going to miss the beginning of it because I do have to take a <laughs> shit. Uh -huh. And I am fasting, and my hours are from three to eight, so I'm, I'm getting a chance to eat here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go eat some. But the show will be good. Um, quick, quick thoughts on... Your prognostication you're giving us tomorrow. Bills, um, Ravens, who, which way are you leaning? I'm going Ravens, and, or I'm going, sorry, I'm going Bills, and I'm, I'm going to have them cover. You think, is there any changing in this, or should we not do this right now because we'll probably do it tomorrow? You should probably do it tomorrow because I'm locked in. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's wow. what you get tomorrow. Hammer yeah, Don nice. is in eight minutes. We can't thank Justin Jefferson enough, Darius Slay enough, everybody for calling in. Bleacher Report, fuck you, okay? You're a good product overall, but what you did set me up with the Juju Beast, completely false. Mm -hmm. I was reporting things that I was told. It was a long night on the internet. I got punked by a goddamn mascot, Gritty. But I'm happy for today. Can't wait for tomorrow. You're going to love the show tomorrow. A.J. Hawk is not only going to predict every single game tomorrow, but also breaking news with A.J. Hawk tomorrow on the Whoa! show. Let's go. Let's go, Coach. Right? Yep. Can't wait. Tune in. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Can't thank you guys enough. Cheers.